بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله بإزته وجلاله تتم الصالحات سو وي ستارتينغ ذا 14th جزء اللهم لا سحل الا ما جعلته سحلا رب اشرح لي صدري ويسر لي امري واحلل عقده من لساني يفقهوا قولي امين يا رب This would be a good time to actually stop and look back at what has been happening because now Surah Hijr is going to change the rhythm as you know the last five uh, surahs almost except for Surah Yusuf you could say the uh sut al um you could say after uh sut al tauba then after that sut al yunus and then you had uh sut al hud okay these two surahs were a pair and one of the main themes was give us a sign give us a sign give us a miracle like other prophets had a miracle and as we mentioned allah had decided no more miracles in the, in in terms of whatever you request i'm not going to give you any miracle then after these two surahs these two surahs are a pair sut al yunus and sut al hud okay and then you have surah yusuf which is completely um you can say unique in the quran the only other surah that kind of meets the pattern of surah yusuf is surah taha where the life of musa alayhi salatu wasalam will be discussed and that's interesting because yusuf is how they got into egypt and musa is how they got back out of egypt into the palestine area now we now we did surah rad and surah ibrahim these were relatively uh, smaller surahs but they had uh long ayahs in the makki period so now allah subhanahu wa ta'ala completely changes the rhythm here and the style you'll see is changed the rhythm is changed and the subjects are a little bit different than what we've been studying in the past uh five surahs not including surah yusuf but not including surah yusuf what like i said was unique but surah you had surah yunus and surah hud and then you had surah rad and surah ibrahim basically on many of the similar topics that we're continuing now for four surahs now this surah surah al-hijr surah al-hijr is you know an early makki surah in early makki surahs they were fast paced in atay nakal kawthar ar-rahman allama al-quran khalaq al-insan they also have a great you could say rhythm a great music and a great tone a very attractive tone and very like comprehensive ayat very very comprehensive ayat and then you know think of this like as if you know when the river bed that's moving in the mountainous areas right so the river bed is the river bed is small but the flow is very fast of the river the flow of the river is very fast and so this is like this this is the makki quran then as the river bed gets bigger and bigger and sometimes it goes you know instead of like 10 meters 12 meters it becomes even one or two or three miles and things slow down a little bit and then in up to the madni quran where you have ayat like ayat ad-din the last a uh, few uh, the long, longest ayat in the entire quran about debt then you have ayat al-kursi you have ayat al-ayat right you have all these different ayat <coughs> you have <coughs> ayat al-bir also there so you have many many long 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 ayats it's like you know a big then the pace has slowed down and the rhythm is not as uh, you could say as um, as um, as clear uh, or maybe there could be a better word for that so but now you know instead of dealing with the you, you know the surahs that have long ayat which would be we were studying in the beginning the madni surahs which also have long ayat and the ending of the mak the middle and end end of mak the makki end of the middle middle end of the makki period also have longer ayat but the earlier surahs like i said the first few surah the first you know the first early the early makki surahs and especially within the first 5 years um of the early makki surahs the surahs are very fast paced so uh surah hijr in its topic and in its terms of its theme and in its style is uh will be very close to surah uh, shu'ara uh, i believe it will get to that and then i'll just confirm that inshallah um and so uh so this surah is very fast paced so inshallah without any further um uh oh let's also look at a general overview of the topics that we will be covering in this um surah and the surahs in this juz so you have sutul hijr so you have quran is ever protected god's commandment command on everything man's creation ibrahim's son lut and shuaib again the people of the rock then we start with sutul nahl now sutul nahl is probably one of the most interesting surahs in terms of the signs and the ayat of allah Generally when we think about the signs of Allah we think about Surah Rahman fa bi ayya ala rabbikum ma tukadhiban which of Allah's powers or ni'mas or bounties do you deny but 
Actually, so the Nahal is in some ways more significant. And, you know, so the Nahal and so the Rum and so the uh, Rahman and uh, one more surah that's uh, uh, not coming to my mind right now. But these surahs, they have a, a lot of emphasis on the ni'mas of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. In some ways, so the Nahal is very, very significant in this issue. Uh, this is the same surah that will say, uh, If you count the ni'mas of Allah, the bounties of Allah, you cannot count them. So this is Surah Al-Nahl, uh, the signs of God, the existence of God, the signs of God. God is one disgrace which the wicked will suffer. Guidance through the Prophet, seek guidance from the Quran, paganism prohibited, guidance in the bounties for people, faithful and unfaithful, the day of judgment to come suddenly, the Prophet is a witness, keep up the covenant and promises, uh, Quran brought down by Jibreel alayhi salatu wasalam, every soul gets what it's earned, and Ibrahim alayhi salatu wasalam praised. So this is the 14th juz. Okay? So without any further delay, inshallah, bismillah, let's get started. A'udhu billahi min ash-shaytan ar-rajim, bismillah ar-rahman ar-rahim. Alif lam ra, tilka ayatul kitabi, these are the alif lam ra, and if you notice, uh, the the you know alif lam mim alif lam mim in the very beginning Bakra and alimran, and then we had these alif lam mim ra, uh, alif uh, so alif lam ra over here we have, so we have harus bul muqattaat generally especially when it's going to discuss the Quran. So Allah subhanahu wa taala says alif lam ra tilka ayatul kitab. These are the ayat the signs of the book. Okay. وَقُرْآنِ mubin And a clear Qur'an. This is ayah number one. So, you know, signs is a very interesting subject itself. Uh, I don't know if I want to discuss it here, but let me go ahead and discuss uh, in, in, uh, in, in, in philosophy. There is a science of signs uh, in philosophy. Um, and so, signs is a very interesting subject because that's how the human beings tend to think in terms of signs. That... Uh, so anyway, tilka ayatul kitab, it's very interesting that this book gives us signs because that's how human beings tend to think. We think it tend to think in terms of signs. Okay? Mm -hmm. And so so the science of signs, human beings, this uh, this video will inshallah explain to you that how fascinating, absolutely how fascinating it is that Allah uses the word signs. Allah uses the word ayah, a icon, a symbol, a a message. You know, it, our brain works on day-to-day -day using signs. This is how our brain works, right? And, and there's, this is a whole, a whole field within philosophy that is a study of signs. But, and, and the fact that the Quran repeats this word, signs, 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 tilka ayat, these are the ayat, these are the signs, these are the signs, these are the signs, and this is how the brain works. Right, the that a and a sign is always meant to point to something other than itself. You look at the sun and the moon and the stars. What is it all pointing to? Right. So just watch this small introduction on the issue of semiotics, of the science of signs and how and and what Allah is basically saying is this universe is a big sign for you. You know all these different all these different things together are a sign for the reality, and. And so this is a, a very important philosophical subject, and I just wanted to touch upon it over here in, in this part of the Qur'an. This blob is eating dinner. This blob is sleepy. This blob loves you. But how do we know that? This is a job for semiotics, the field of study that explores how humans and other organisms derive meaning from the world around them. In semiotics, a sign is anything that represents or indicates something else, called the object. A sign isn't necessarily pictorial. For example, the feel of a fruit may indicate its ripeness, and the sound of buzzing may mean there is a bee around. Charles Sanders Peirce defined three categories of sign, icon, index, and symbol, based on how the sign is related to the object. An icon directly resembles the object. It shares tangible qualities with the object. For example, a painting of a pipe is an icon representing a pipe. A map of London is an icon representing London and the sound of coconuts may be an icon representing the sound of horse's hooves in a film. An index has an implied association with the object. The sign and the object are connected in a logical way. For example, a growling stomach indicates hunger, sunglasses and a white cane indicate blindness, and the smell of smoke indicates a nearby fire. A symbol is not inherently connected to the object. Instead, the connection is a matter of convention within a particular society. 
because their meanings must be explicitly taught, symbols are easily misunderstood. Examples of symbols include the dotted lines on a road, symbolizing that drivers may pass one another, and the Star of David, symbolizing Judaism. Most words are also symbols, as they have no natural connection with the objects they represent. Professionals in any field that involves interaction and communication can benefit from understanding semiotics. For example, user interface designers are charged with making websites, programs, and applications easy to navigate, and they often utilize icons, indices, and symbols to achieve that goal. In order to create an effective interface, designers may run side-by-side -side tests, called A-B testing, to determine which signs are best associated with the intended object. The public's interpretation of signs changes very quickly in the realm of technology, as evidenced by the highly debated use of the hamburger button to represent a menu. Through widespread use of the button and careful design choices surrounding it, the hamburger button is now correctly interpreted by most users and has quickly become an industry standard. Similarly, signs may become less attached to their meaning over time, such as the image of a floppy disk representing the save function. Formerly an index, as users associated a physical floppy disk with storing information, this button has become a symbol as new users learn its function without ever having experience with a floppy disk. Animators and illustrators also need semiotics to understand how their work will be interpreted by audiences. While some depictions of emotions are based on natural and universal facial expressions, others are symbolic and only make sense to certain audiences. This became clear when emoji, originally developed for a Japanese phone messaging service, were introduced to the West. This new audience used their own experiences with Western comics and cartoons to interpret emoji, often in ways the original designers had not intended. For example, in Western animation, an angry character may blow steam from their nose or ears, so Western audiences interpret this emoji as angry, while the original intention was to depict a person exhaling in triumph after accomplishing a goal. Understanding how different cultures view certain symbols is of utmost importance in today's world of global media. These examples may imply that semiotics focuses only on human interactions with the man-made world, but in fact, biologists use semiotics to understand how all life forms interact with and interpret their environment. The ability to express and interpret signs, however rudimentary, is one of the fundamental qualities that distinguishes living organisms from non-living objects. Furthermore, the ability to interpret abstract, symbolic signs seems to be unique to human beings, and may help to distinguish humans from non-human animals. Whether you're a fish looking for food or a student looking for the library, interpreting signs is an essential part of everyday life. Knowing more about how we make meaning from the world around us will help us to be better communicators and creators. So now what's the point here? The point is everything is a sign. Everything we do is a sign. And the Prophet comes. Uh, Salamun ala al-mursaleen, walhamdulillahi rabbil alameen. Prophets of Allah come and they help us interpret the signs of the universe to what it is it pointing towards, right? What is What are all these things pointing towards? What is the purpose of all these signs is to tell you about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and to recognize Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. How come we're so good at interpreting all sorts of signs and games <coughs> in, <coughs> on PCs, all you know, all these signs we interpret it and we understand it, but we don't understand the main signs that Allah is giving us. And so, from this perspective, I want you to uh, maybe appreciate what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is doing in Surah Al Hijr and other surahs and throughout the whole Quran. Whenever Allah is saying, These are my signs, these are my signs. Tilka ayatul kitab al Quran al Mubin. These are the signs of the book and a recitation that is clear. Perhaps those who reject the truth will wish on the day of judgment that they were Muslims. Leave them, O Prophet Wasallam. Let them eat, let them enjoy, and give them hope of the future. You know, let them be yumli lahumul amal. Let their hopes divert them. Fasofa ya'lamun, they will soon know if they're rejecting this message. وَمَا أَهْلَكْنَا مِنْ قَرْيَةٍ إِلَّا لَهَا كِتَابٌ مَعْلُومٌ We have never destroyed a city except that it had a known decree, a time where it would be destroyed. No nation 
will uh, uh, will live beyond its appointed time, uh, nor will they remain وَمَا هُمْ يَسْتَخِرُونَ Nor will they remain afterwards. That's it. Like Nuh came, Firaun came, Ad came, Samud came, their time came and that was it. وَقَالُوا يَا أَيُّهَا الَّذِي أُنْزِلَ عَلَيْهِ الذِّكْرَ إِنَّكَ لَمَجْنُونَ Oh you, who and who, the dhikr came down. Dhikr is Qur'an. Ad dhikr is Qur'an. As we already read, نَحْنُ نَزَّلْنَا ذِكْرَ وَنَحْنُ لَهُ لَحَافِذُونَ We're the one who sent Ad dhikr. The reminder, the reminding. All forms of adhkar, they come out of Qur'an. Subhanallah, alhamdulillah, Allahu Akbar, la ilaha illallah, ma sha Allah, la hawla wa la quwata illa billah. All these days, they're ma'khuz min al-Qur'an. The purpose of the reminding is, what? It's to remind us what is the reality of this universe that is already within us. See, semiotics, the knowledge of the signs, means that there's something within us that already is programmed to tell us, to be able to decode what the information out there is. And so dhikr is to be reminded of what is the knowledge you already have, the knowledge of right and wrong that you already have. It's to be reminded of that, to be reinforced with that, and to remind you that, yes, there is an Allah, and you are answerable to Allah. So, قَالُوا يَا أَيُّهَا الَّذِي نُزِّلَ عَلَيْهِ ذِكْرَ وَإِنَّكَ لَمَجْنُونَ Oh, uh, indeed, you are uh, majnoon. Now, it is possible in the early Makki period, they said this out of istihza, they made this, they said this to make fun of the Prophet Wasallam. It is also possible that they said this in early Makki period because they just felt like, you know, he was going onto the mountains and, you know, who knows what happened. Maybe some jinn took over him. La majnoon means also a jinn. Inna ka la majnoon. Oh, some jinn has taken over you, right? <clears throat> so they kind of like, uh, as an excuse of not listening to what the Prophet had to say, they came up with this pitiful Kind of like, oh, we're sorry, you know, some jinn probably took over him. Now he's saying these crazy things that he's a prophet. And, you know, after all, he used to go to these mountains all alone, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So this type of attitude could have also been there. And then, of course, those people that are making fun of the prophet, they don't want to accept what this Qur'an is saying. نُزِّلَ عَلَيْهِ ذِكْرَ إِنَّكَ لَمَجْنُونَ Indeed, O oh Prophet, they say you have gone crazy. But, of course, the prophet hasn't gone crazy. He came down with very clear, very precise very sophisticated but very simple teachings that should be apparent to anybody with a good heart. Why don't you bring down angels? Lo, if you only did. Why don't you? Come down with angels. Why don't you bring down an angel? If you're truthful. The angels don't come down except for a just cause. وَمَا كَانُوا إِذَا مُنْزِرِينَ And when the angels come down, like when they came down to the Prophet, the prophet Lut, you know, when angels come down, they come down to finish the affairs. That's it. إِنَّا نَحْنُ نَزَّلْنَا ذِكْرَ وَإِنَّا لَهُ لَحَافِذُونَ Over here, this is the ayah. And indeed, we sent down the ad dhikr, the reminding, the, uh, the Qur'an that will open up your inside to the truths that are already within you. وَإِنَّ لَهُ لَحَافِذُونَ Indeed, we are the one who are the protector of this Qur'an. وَلَكَدْ أَرْسَلْنَا مِنْ قَبْلِكَ فِي شِيْعٍ أَوَّلِينَ O Prophet ﷺ, لَقَدْ أَرْسَلْنَاكَ وَلَقَدْ أَرْسَلْنَا مِنْ قَبْلِكَ O Prophet ﷺ, before we already sent فِي شِيْعِ الْأَوَّلِينَ We sent to many groups before, okay? The prophets of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. وَمَا تَأْتِهِمْ مِنْ رَسُولٍ إِلَّا كَانُوا بِيَسْتَحْزِيُونَ And no messenger came to them except they mocked them. So this is now the prophet, you know, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. He's being mocked at this point. And so Allah is saying, look, no messenger comes except they are mocked. This is going to happen. كَذَلِكَ نُسْلِكُهُ فِي قُلُوبِ الْمُجْرِمِينَ And this is how we put denial into the hearts of the mujrimin by making fun of the prophets, by diverting their attention to making fun of the prophets and then making that an excuse into their hearts to not listen to the prophets of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. لَا يُؤْمِنُ بِهِ قَدْ خَلَتْ سُنَّةُ الْأَوَّلِينَ They will not believe it and قَدْ خَلَتْ سُنَّةُ الْأَوَّلِينَ And those that have are been there from before, they've already uh, قَدْ خَلَتْ They have already finished, okay? The, the punishment already came to the awwaleen, to the early people. لو فتحنا عليهم بابا من السماء فذنوا فيها يعرجون. And even if we open the gate from the heavens and from the skies, okay, uh, and they confirmed, uh, فذلوا فيه يعرجون. 
and they continued and they went on to the sky to ascend okay into the sky okay even if they if that happened to them they would not believe qalu innaka la they would they would what would they say qalu innama sukkirat absaruna bal nahnu qaumun mashurun they would say that we have mass psychosis we have magic has been done on us they would say innama sukkirat absaruna our eyes have been dazzled bal nahnu qaumun mashurun but magic has been put upon all of us لَقَدْ جَعَلْنَا فِي السَّمَاءِ بُرُوجًا And we put in the heavens buruj, towers. Now we don't know what this means yet. But maybe one day we will figure this out. But one meaning of this in a metaphorical way is that the angels are sitting there. And there, are, you know, the buruj are the fortresses. So the angels are sitting there ready to come down and take revenge on, for the believers, for the Prophet of Allah. They're there. The fortresses are there, the angels are there, and they are looking at the wrong and the injustices people are doing, and they're ready to pounce and take revenge and to, and to exact justice at any moment. لَقَدْ جَعَلْنَا فِي السَّمَاءِ بُرُوجًا وَزَيَّنَّاهَا And we made it beautiful with these stars, right? لِلنَّازِرِينَ For the people that see. And then also another part of the ghaib that a, a phenomenon Qur'an discusses, but we have no experience of that, you can say. وَحَفِزْنَاهَا مِنْ كُلِّ شَيْطَانِ الرَّجِيمِ And we have protected the sky uh, from every shaytan al-rajim, every, every shaytan that is cursed. Allahu A'lam, but I think this is within this earth, right, that they used to go to the sky and try to listen to the angels and maybe go a little bit further, listen to the angels what they can, but then this stopped after the Qur'an came down, which will be clarified, inshallah, in great detail in Surah Al-Muzammil and in Surah Al-Jinn also. So, <clears throat> so as far as sama'i burujan and 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 for the for the sky that has uh, high towers uh, that there buruj actually means a fortress so it could mean to many things but you know there are many constellations of stars that are together and then it's all empty and black and then constellation of stars that are together and empty and black it's almost like it's a fortress <coughs> of stars and gal <coughs> galaxies coming together and then there, it's all dark Okay, and so, so inshallah, we'll deal with this subject <coughs> about buruj in Sutul Buruj and uh, about the shayateen and the jinns. We'll deal with that when we get to Sutul Jinn, inshallah. So, بعد عوض بالله من الشيطان الرجيم لقد جعلنا في السماء بروج and we made in the sky buruj uh, fortified towers or uh, well, and the Quran also mentioned ولا تبرج الجاهلية don't come out with your display of your beauty. The word buruj also means the display of beauty. So it can mean that. وَزَيَّنَّاهَا لِلنَّازِرِينَ And we beautified it for the people to see. وَحَفِزْنَا مِنْ كُلِّ شَيْطَانِ الرَّجِيمِ And we made it a protection against every shaitan that is cursed. Who is shaitan? Shaitan is a jinn that has sworn an allegiance to Iblis. Okay, so this is, should be clear technically. إِلَّا مَنْ مَنْ اِسْتَرَقَ السَّمْعَ فَأَتْبَهُ شِهَابٌ مُبِينَ Except for the one who steals a hearing. إِلَّا مَنْ سَرَقَ إِلَّا مَنْ سَرَقَ سَمْعَ The one who steals is something that's heard. فَأَتْبَهُ شِهَابٌ مُبِينٌ And when he does that, when it, then automatically a shihab, a something that comes <coughs> pursuing it with great strength comes after it. This may be of the things of the unseen. Based upon my conversations with jinns, it also seems like it's something that they experience, but something that we cannot clearly see in Allahu A'lam. وَالْأَرْضَ مَدَدْنَاهَا وَأَلْقَيْنَا فِيهَا رَوَاسِيَةً And the earth, we have spread it, and we put on it the, um, the rawasiya is different from jibal. Jibal is mountains. Rawasiya is mountain ranges. So they literally, like, go down deep into the earth. Rawasiya. وَأَنْبَتْنَا فِيهَا مِنْ كُلِّ شَيْءٍ مَوْزُونَ And we caused everything to grow in it, right, with a balanced, in a balanced way. وَجَعَلْنَا لَكُمْ فِيهَا مَعَيْشِ And we made for you in it a living. وَمَنْ لَسْتُمْ لَهُ رَازِقِينَ And those also that you don't feed. So there are those animals that you don't feed, Allah is feeding them. Okay? And then there are those things, وَجَعَلْنَا لَكُمْ فِيهَا مَعَيْشِ Allah made a living for you. And Allah Himself provides for some of the species that He created. You don't provide for them. So this ayah can have different meanings. Okay? 
وَإِن مِنْ شَيْءٍ إِلَّا إِن دَنَا خَزَائِنُهُ There's nothing except that we have it, its treasures. وَمَا نُنَزِّلُهُ إِلَّا بِقَدْرٍ مَعْلُومٍ And we don't bring down the treasures except in a, a known amount. Okay? So, uh, we don't bring down its treasures. Bringing down of the treasures can have many meanings, again, uh, because everything starts with the water, and then, you know, uh, things take place from there. From the sky, and then that's what uh, creates all the elements and the and the, the molecules, and the water plays a big role in that. Allahu a'lam. Wa in min shayin illa in the nakhaza inhu wa manu nazziluhu, or the coming down of it is not in the sense of how much how the metal was made, but how much you would what is written for you to get that's written down from the sky, meaning it's in the destiny written with Allah subhanahu wa taala. Wa manu nazziluhu illa bi qadrin ma'loom. Allah knows how much He had to send. How much, how much oil to send? He knew this for civilization to work and humanity to reach its growth and its nurturing and its civil, uh, its capac its uh, growing capacities and so on and so forth. Even though oil is a bad example, uh, because oil is a source of fitna, as you know. But the point is uh, valid still. وَأَرْسَلْنَا رِيحَ لَوَاقِحَ and we sent down the winds uh, with, with fermentation. فَأَنْزَلْنَا مِنَ السَّمَاءِ مَاءً and we sent down from the sky water. فَأَسْقَيْنَاكُمُوهُ And we gave you water from it from it to drink. وَمَا أَنْتُمْ لَهُ بِخَازِنِينَ And you are not the one who have these treasures to do this. You don't have the ability to do this. this Allah is running the system for you so you can benefit from it. And indeed, it is we who give life and death. And we are the ones who inherit everything at the end. Everything dies, and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the inheritor of everything. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows those things that will come after, the generations that will be coming after, uh, after, and those that already came before. For Allah, it's all one and same. For Allah, there's no time factor. Allah created time, but He already knows what will be happening in the future and what happened already in the past. وَإِنَّ رَبَّكَ لَهُوَ يَحْشِرُهُمْ إِنَّهُ حَكِيمٌ عَلِيمٌ Indeed, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is going to gather them. Indeed, He is complete in His wisdom and in His knowledge. وَلَقَدْ خَلَقْنَا الْإِنسَانَ مِنْ صَلْصَالٍ مِنْ حَمَئٍ مَسْنُونٍ And indeed, we created man. In, from salsalin min hama'in masnoon. Maybe I will talk about this subject uh, more in Surah Rahman. But over here I just want to give you the idea. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created man from ma, water, from turab, dust. When these two come together, it makes teen. So Allah created us from teen, as you'll see. Then Allah, when this water and mud come together and then some fermentation and some process takes place. That is called min sala min salsal and min hama masnoon from a, a clay that uh, has black mud in it. And I'm going to show that to you in a second, because this is very important for understanding the process of you can say the creation of human being, which is very similar. This these words that Quran has used for the creation of man and the and what we know in in the in the um, process of evolution. There is some similarities for sure. So some sort of evolution took place, not necessarily Darwinian evolution or Lamartine evolution, not necessarily that, but some sort of evolution took place. So <clears throat> regarding that, uh, just very quickly, you know, one of the words used in Quran for creation of man is ma. And we created from water every living thing. As you know, this is the very basics of evolution. But then on top of that, you have Turab. Okay. So Turab is the dust, is the land, okay? And then you have Sansalin, okay? And this is when uh, it has been uh, under the heat of the sun also, and it makes a sounding, and I'm going to show you when this hama i Masnoon, the word that we're, but what is important to understand here is evolution and the importance of wetlands. Where wet, the ocean and the land, they meet this place. What happens when these two places meet? There's a special type of sticky clay, uh, which Allah calls, uh, 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 which Allah calls sticky clay. I can't think of the word right now. We'll come to that, inshallah, when that comes. Uh, but it's this type of sticky clay. It's black, 
as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala calls it, hama'im masnoon, this is like the black sticky clay, okay, teen al lazib, that's the thick, the, the teen, the clay that's sticky, okay, and this has many uh, creations in it, and this is the place, you could say, where it is black clay, mud, sticky mud, this is the, this is also a common aspect between uh, modern evolution and uh, and so when we come back to this لَقَدْ خَلَقْنَا الْإِنسَانَ مِنْ صَلْصَالٍ مِنْ حَمَائٍ from black mud حَمَائٍ is black mud مَسْنُونَ that is then then altered fer fermented or whatever process it went through okay وَالْجَانَ خَلَقْنَاهُ مِنْ قَبْلُ مِنْ نَارِ مِنْ نَارِ السَّمُومِ and before this we created the jinn out of the fire that is very very hot very very scorching uh, and that is that part of the fire there's a part of the fire that cannot be seen that is the hottest part of the fire is the part of the fire that cannot be seen okay <clears throat> there's actually a technical term for that so we will talk about the smokeless jinn at, at, at another place inshallah ta'ala right here is not sumum not a sumum the fire that is scorchingly hot which is also by the way uh, can be invisible and so uh, one of the reasons maybe it is hard to see a jinn is that because of what it has been created from is uh, when heat is super hot sometimes it is ha ha hard to see um, a lot of times the, what you see is uh, you could say is because it's not pure combustion um, anyway um, so Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala then says وَإِذْ قَالَ رَبُّكَ لِلْمَلَائِكَةِ إِنِّي خَالِكُمْ بَشَرٌ مِّن صَلْصَالٍ مِّن حَمَئٍ مَسْنُونٍ And then remember, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said to the angels, إِنِّي خَالِكُمْ بَشَرٌ I'm going to create man. One of the words used for man is bashar. Bashar means skin. Bashar means good news. So man was one of those uh, human-like beings, meaning there were human-like structurally anatomically human-like beings like the java man the nandrothal lucy and all these one of them was a a species that ha seemed to have less hair like the human beings so this is perhaps what it can be referring to and i'm going to create a bashar from the extract of from an altered uh, you know, from the the black uh, mud that I just showed you, from the black mud that is an, an alternative to that. It is altered. It has been fermented because of that. And so man is going to be created from that extract of that. <clears throat> so it's not important what man has been created of from the physical perspective. But what is more interesting and more important is what man has been created from a spiritual perspective. So there is this world of time and space, and then there is an element of human being that is of this time and space. But a man is a compound of something other than just time and space. Something from what is called alam al-amr, from the world of command. You know, when you'll be in Jannah, everything will be at your command. Be and it is. Be and it is. You will want fruits and it will be there. Right? You say, subhanAllah, and a tree is uh, there in one second, a full tree. So, time and space doesn't matter over there. This this space outside this takhliq, out of the, outside the, uh, this world that we know is beyond the world of time. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala put this world in the world of time and space, which will be mentioned in Surah Al-Dahr. So, there is this now part of man that is being mentioned. That while man physically has been created from a very, like, um, almost disgusting uh, thing, uh, but spiritually now, when I have finished his finishing touches, and when I have blown, breathed into him from my ruh, when I have breathed into him from my ruh, فَقَعُوا لَهُ سَاجِدِينَ then at that time, fall into sujood to him. When will you fall into sujood? When I blow my ruh into him 
from my ruh, when I blow my breath into him, then you bow down to him. Because now he's been touched with something divine. Okay? Just everything in the universe is from Allah. It's been touched, you could say. It's been it's a manifestation of Allah's attributes. But man has something special that that, that is not just a manifestation of this physical world, but of the world of uh, Amr, the world of command. فَسَجَدَ الْمَلَائِكَةُ كُلُّهُمْ أَجْمَعِينَ So all of the angels bowed down, all of them. إِلَّا Iblis, Except Iblis didn't bow down. أَبَا وَكَانَ أَبَا أَنْ يَكُونَ مَعَ السَّاجِدِينَ He refused to be amongst those who bow down. Even though Iblis was from the jinn, this will be clarified in Surah Al-Kahf, he was amongst the jinn, he was not amongst the human, the angels that were asked to bow down. He could have said, you didn't, you asked the angels, you didn't ask me, but when he was asked, he completely refused, he's like, I'm not going to. After Allah made it clear to him, Allah wants him to. قَالَ إِبْلِيسُ مَا لَكَ أَلَّا تَكُونَ مَعَ السَّاجِدِينَ Allah said, Ya Iblis, what is wrong with you that you're not amongst those that do, do sujood? قَالَ لَمْ أَكُلْ لِي أَسْجُدَ لِبَشَرٍ خَلَقَهُ مِنْ صَلْصَالٍ مِنْ حَمَئٍ مَسْنُونَ He said, لَمْ أَكُونُ لِي It's not for me to do sujood. It's not, it's not befitting for me to do sujood. لِبَشَرٍ To a human. خَلَقَهُ مِنْ صَلْصَالٍ مِنْ حَمَئٍ مَسْنُونَ That has been created from the extract of black fermented clay. This he said, I could never do this. So this type of substance, like I showed before, so this is the black clay that's like an extract of, uh, extract, uh, it's the black, uh, uh, it's where land and sea meet, okay? And it is, uh, you know, this uh, place where uh, the dust and water become thin, and then from thin, it becomes what you're seeing before you. And in the other words, Quran uses after that. So, قَالَ لَمْ أَكُنْ لِي أَسْجُدَ لِبَشَرٍ خَلَقَهُ مِنْ صَلْصَالٍ مِنْ حَمَئٍ مَسْنُونَ It's not for me to bow down to a bashar, to a human being that has been created from an extract of black altered mud. قَالَ فَخْرُجْ إِنَّكَ مِنَ إِنَّكَ رَجِيمٍ So this is the point. Fakhruj, okay, then leave my presence. Over here is the angels. This is where the angels reside. You can no longer reside in this area. Qala Fakhruj, minha fa innaka rajim. You are now to leave and you cannot be here. You're an outcast. You're expelled. Wa inna alayka la'nata ila yawmiddin. And for you is the curse till the day of judgment. Curse meaning Allah's rahmah was taken away from him. Subhanallah. قَالَ رَبِّ رَبِّ فَانْزُرْنِي إِلَىٰ يَوْمِ يُبْعَثُونَ But he still had the audacity and the guts and still took advantage uh, from his perspective of Allah's mercy. So even though Allah's mercy has been taken away, but now he's doing a dua. Uh, رَبِّ فَانْزُرْنِي إِلَىٰ يَوْمِ يُبْعَثُونَ Oh Allah, give me respite, give me some time until the day where they're all resurrected again. قَالَ فَإِنَّكَ مِنَ الْمُنزِلِينَ And so Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said to shaitan, Okay, now you are of those people that are given respite. You go do what you want. إِلَىٰ يَوْمِ يَوْمِ الْوَقْتِ الْمَعْلُومِ To a time that only Allah knows what time that is. Okay? قَالَ رَبِّ بِمَا أَغْوَيْتَنِي لَأُزَيِّنَنَّ لَهُمْ فِي الْأَرْضِ وَلَأُغْوِيَنَّهُمْ أَجْمَعِينَ And he said, Iblis said, by Allah, because you, because of what I have been put astray because of, meaning this human being, I will make things beautiful to him. I'll make things beautiful and attractive to them in things earth. So that I will then, this wow here is wow tafsiri. Why will he do that? So that he will lead them astray. إِلَّا إِبَادَكَ مِنْهُمْ مُخْلَصِينَ Except for the, those worship, that worship you sincerely, with ikhlas. اللَّهُمَّ جَعَلْنَا مِنَ الْمُخْلَصِينَ 
اللهم اجعلنا من المخلصين قال هذا صراط صراط علي مستقيم ان الله said this is my path the path to me is the straight path and the path that you try to take people to that won't be the straight path ان عبادي ليس عليهم سلطان as for my true servants you will have no sultan no control over them اللهم اجعلنا منهم من الذين ليس ليس له من من السلطان ان عبادك ليس عليهم Sultan, as for your true servants, they will have no control. You will have no control over them. Illa man ittabaaka min al-ghawin, except for those that follow you in the deviations that you create. In the jahan, and then what is the deviations? I mean, in a very strictly speaking manner, right? Uh, all these lifestyles that have been created, right? Other than the lifestyle of Islam. So whether it is the lifestyle of listening to music, whether it's the lifestyle of uh, the gay community, where it's a lifestyle of, you know, even some aspects of gaming, right? All these different other li lifestyles that have been created, they're all sources that deviate you from the straight path. And then Jahannam, the hellfire, is their promise at the end, all of them. And it has seven gates. And every gate of them has a por portion designated, meaning designated for certain types of sins. Okay. In al muttaqina fi jannatin wa ayyun, and in contrast, the people of taqwa they will be in gardens and they'll have springs. Udhuluha bi salami aminin, and it will be said to them, enter in peace and in in salam and aminin, in peace and inner tranquility, both external peace which is islam and internal internal peace and tranquility where there's no fear no grief no regret no remorse no worries no stress aminin internal peace wanaza'na ma fi sudurihim ghillan li ikhwanina ala sururin mutaqabilin and we will remove wanaza'na ma fi sudurihim min ghillin ikhwanan and we will cause we will remove any ghill okay any uh, any um, resentment that they have in their hearts for their bro brothers, and then they will be sitting on thrones facing each other. Okay, It won't be like they don't want to face each other. You can be in the best place like Jannah, but if you have inner animosity with the people around you, that's not going to help you, right? That, that will make a good place look bad. And no, uh, t they won't be fatigued. Okay, uh, it will not touch them. وَمَا لَهُمْ مِنْهَا مُعْجِزِينَ And they will be not uh, made to fail. They will not be made to be removed. They will not be... وَمَا هُمْ مِنْهَا مُخْرِجِينَ Sorry. And they will not be taken out from there, ever. نَبِّعْ إِبَادِي إِنِّي أَنَا الْغَفُورُ رَحِيمُ And tell my servants... Inni, indeed I am, and Al-Ghafoor Rahim. I'm Ghafoor, I'm Rahim. I'm the most forgiving, most merciful. And my punishment is the most severe of all punishments. And let them know about the guest of Ibrahim alayhi salatu wasalam. And then they entered into Ibrahim alayhi salatu wasalam, they said, Salaman. Qala innakum minkum wajiloon. Uh, so, Ibrahim said to them, we are fearful of you. We are cautious of you. Okay. Qala la, ta, ta, uh, la tawjal anna yubashiruka bi ghulamin alim. Don't be fearful. We are here to tell you of a very knowledgeable son. For Ismail, the word was used, sabr. Over here, the word for Ishaq is used, Alim. We will give you the good news of a very knowledgeable um, a child. So Ibrahim said, you've given me the good news, although old age has come to me. أن تمسني الكبر فبما تبشرون then 
then of what wonder, uh, or f f wh why are you giving me, you could say, this good news? Or a better translation would be, for, for what reason are you giving me this good news? Our good news is in truth. Uh, don't be of those people that despair. We gave you Ismail already, and now we're giving you Ishaq. Even though the old classical scholars of Islam, they were 50-50 on this, that who was the first son. Um, if you look at the old classical scholars, but then over time, the opinion of majority of the scholars became that the first son was Ismail, and that actually makes more sense. And also, uh, Mawlana Farahi, uh, he wrote a book, uh, Manil Zabih, basically. Who is the Zabih? Who is the Zabih? Uh, that also clarifies the situation to a great degree. Qala, and he said, Who despairs of the mercy of his Rabb except those, uh, those astray? Okay. Uh, so no one despairs of the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala except those that have gone astray. Those people on the straight path, they, they see the mercy of Allah. And this is another very interesting point. Now it's not clear who's saying this is the continuation of the angels or is this Ibrahim's response to the angels of what they said. So they said, so now Ibrahim, he's not, he's a person who's been through so many experiences in life. He wasn't uh, really um, moved by this in a way that it was something too abnormal for him to swallow. So he goes on to, the uh, issue, once he knew that he doesn't really have to fear these people that have come as guests to his house. Now, فَمَا خَطُبُكُمْ أَيُّهَا الْمُرْسَلُونَ Now, he said, what is your engagement? What is your engagement, O oh, messengers? قَالُوا إِنَّا أُرْسِلْنَا إِلَىٰ قَوْمٍ مجرمين. They said, we've been sent to a people that are criminals. إِلَىٰ عَالَ لُوتٍ إِنَّا لَنُنَجُّوهُمْ أَجْمَعِينَ and to the to the family of uh, to the people of Lut to the family of Lut, but Al here doesn't mean only family. It can also mean like Ali Fir'aun, the people of Fir'aun, meaning him and his army and everyone that's with him. We're going to definitely save them, all of them, meaning those that believed. Except his wife, Allah has already decreed it. It's already part of Qadr. And she is amongst those that will now re remain behind. And when the messengers came to the family of Lut, so now they're over there, they were with Ibrahim, now the scene has changed. Uh, he said, you are a people, I don't know you. Like, who are you? Right? They said to Lut but we've come uh, to you about which they are uh, about which they are disputing. And that is, oh Lut, you're saying the punishment of Allah will come, when will it come? So they're disputing about it, we're here now. We've come to you with truth and we are definitely telling you the truth. It is Fasir so go out with your family in a portion of the night and and you know just uh turn, follow the back end uh, or the adbarahum okay and don't look back go go in that direction and keep going in that direction now the punishments come and let not one of you look back. And continue on where you're commanded. So just go in the direction you're commanded. Don't look back because this is a this is a nation you don't look back at. They are going to be punished very very severely. The prophet is now witnessed. The punishment has come. The angels told him why they're there. That's it. His job is done. Now he has to get ready to prepare to leave as that city will now be uh, eliminated. وَقَضَيْنَا إِلَيْهِ ذَلِكَ أَمْرٍ And this is how we conveyed to him the decree. Okay? About what Allah has decided. 
وأن دابر هؤلاء مقطوع مصبحين and those sinners those those the, would be eliminated by early morning مقطوع بمصبحين they will be completely eradicated by the morning time وجاءت أهل المدينة يستبشرون and the, the people of the city they came rejoicing oh we found these new people newcomers right so they go to Lut and they say hey we want these newcomers you know they look really beautiful and they were very good handsome looking in, in form that was very beautiful قال إن هؤلاء الضيف فلا تفضهون Lut said look these are my guests so don't shame me وَاتَّقُوا اللَّهَ وَلَا تُحْزُونَ فِي اللَّهِ and do not disgrace me أَوَلَمْ نَنْحَكَ عَنِ الْعَالَمِينَ they said to Lut alayhi sallatu waslam have we not stopped you عَنِ الْعَالَمِينَ regarding people meaning protecting them don't try to protect them all of you know أَوَلَمْ نَنْحَكَ عَنِ الْعَالَمِينَ have we not uh, forbidden you from uh, from these people. قَالَ هَؤُلَاءِ بَنَاتِ إِن كُنْتُمْ فَاعِلِينَ Lut says, look, these are my daughters. If you really want to do, then here's my daughters for you. Meaning, as a prophet, he's the father of all the daughters. He's like, هَؤُلَاءِ بَنَاتِ إِن كُنْتُمْ فَاعِلِينَ Or maybe he's referring to his actual daughters. Allahu A'lam. لَأَمْرُكْ By your life, O Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam إِنَّهُمْ لَفِي سَكْرَاتِهِمْ يَعْمَهُونَ they were in complete intoxication, completely blind. They were like animals. They were so caught up in their desires and what they wanted now, here and now, right now, I want it now. You know, they were completely blind in this. Inshallah, I'll be talking about the mushroom, uh, uh, the marshmallow experiment on this issue um, soon. Uh, yeah. So a loud shriek, a loud noise took them. Mushriqeen at the time of uh, the sunrise. Okay. فَجَعَلْنَا عَلَيْهَا سَافِلَهَا وَأَمْتَرْنَا عَلَيْهِمْ هِجَارًا مِنْ سجيل. And we made the highest part of the city the lowest. فَجَعَلْنَا عَلَيْهَا سَافِلَهَا We turned the whole city around on itself and boom. And in the process of that, وَأَمْتَرْنَا عَلَيْهِمْ هِجَارَةً مِنْ سِجِّيلٍ And we uh, threw upon them stones of سِجِّيلٍ to kill them. This is the same سِجِّيلٍ تَرْمِيهِمْ بِهِجَارَةً مِنْ سِجِّيلٍ that was used to kill the elephants that were trying to go towards the Kaaba. إِنَّ فِي ذَلِكَ لَآيَاتٍ لِلْمُتَصَوِّمِينَ Indeed, in this are signs for people who have uh, the intellect to see, to understand, okay, to mark things out. Indeed, those cities are situated on an established road because this is by the Dead Sea. So because this is by the Dead Sea, these were, you know, where the water is, is where the ports are, is where the trade is, is where plants and vegetation and farmland is. So they were right there on that place. إِنَّ فِي ذَلِكَ لَآيَاتٍ لِلْمُؤْمِنِينَ Indeed, in this are signs for the people who believe. وَإِنْ كَانَ أَصْحَابُ الْأَيْكَةِ الظَّالِمِينَ And the companies of the Aika, right? They were also wrongdoers. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala now is talking about another group of people. Over here, I just want to show you some interesting stuff about uh, Prophet Lut alayhi salatu wasalam. And that is that generally... In the biblical tradition, this is the place that is considered where Prophet Lut was. And uh, uh, and this is a quotation of the Bible. And then the Lord reigned on Sodom and on Gomorrah, brim, brimstone and fire. There does seem to be, in this general area, all of it, um, there does seem to be like a lot of uh, interesting things that show earthquakes and show, uh, you could say, vanishing of civilizations. Um, however, more recent research shows that they were in this area, in the north of the uh, Black Sea. Um, and so, um, over here I want to show you, this is some of the walls of the area 
that where uh, a lot of the biblical archaeologists find or consider Sodom and Gomorrah to be. This is like the cities of the the wall of the cities, and it's made of limestone. The other opinion, which is more authentic, is that it's in this place. This is the Dead Sea, uh, and over here is Tal Hamat, uh, and uh, over here, let me just show you. Um, this is the Dead Sea here. Okay. So then this is the Dead Sea here, the north part of it, in Tal uh, um, Ham Hamarn. Uh, <coughs> so this is, you know, where sulfur <coughs> deposits are of um, sulfur that show like some sort of punishment came in this area where the biblical... Uh, story is and this is some of the rocks in the area that show and we stoned them with fire so this is one of the locations and uh, just in Google uh, this is the location that we're looking at this is the Dead Sea this is basically Jordan here and this is Jerusalem and this is Tel Aviv <coughs> this is Tel Aviv here so just to give you an idea, um, there was another thing I wanted to show you, inshallah. Um, let me actually um, see. Some of the more recent um, discoveries, you could say, is the Middle Age, like this book, the Middle Age, Bronze, the Middle Bronze Age, ex Civilization Ending Destruction. So this is about uh, the Middle Bronze Age civilization ending destruction of the Middle Gore. And uh, this was a dissertation. And then there's the destruction of Sodom. And what we have learned from Tal uh, al-Hammam and its neighbors. So this seems to be, uh, based upon the latest research, the, 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 the actual more closer location to where Prophet Lut was. But... <coughs> <coughs> but it is possible that all of the uh, assumptions are wrong and it is possible that it because Allah destroyed many nations and so this could be one of them and it doesn't have to be Prophet Lut necessarily anyway going back to the uh, Quran inna ashab al and and uh, Ashab al is another name, basically, there are different opinions, but it's another name for people of uh, Madian. In Ashab al-Aikati la Zalimin, indeed the people of Madian, Prophet Shu'ib they were definitely wrongdoers. فَاتَّقَمْنَا مِنْهُمْ وَإِنَّهُمْ لَبِإِمَامٍ مُبِينٍ And we took revenge from them, and uh, both of the cities uh, are in a clear uh, place, in a clear highway. Okay, so their location is near a clear highway. Okay, so we took revenge on them, and indeed, both these cities are on a La Imam Mubin are in a clear front or on a clear highway. So just for information, inshallah, this is where Madian is on the clear path because you know it's right by the um the the Gulf of Aqaba. Okay. Uh, this should also become clear that you know you see how this is uh Israel, this is Jordan, and this is, you have to pass by Madian to get to, um, to, to Sinai, and you have to pass by Madian if you want to go to, uh, Palestine, if you want to go to Egypt, so this was on the way to many of the, uh, important places, or if you're leaving from Sinai or Egypt into Jordan, you might have to go through here. So this is just to make it also clear that if you're coming anywhere from the ship on this side, you would have to go through 
this place called Madian. So this is the traditional site of Madian. Okay. So this is what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala may be referring to when he said that they are on a clear path, both of them. فَتَقَمْنَا مِنْهُمْ وَإِنَّهُمْ لَإِمَامٍ مُبِينٍ And they are just clearly right in front. Uh, in a, in, and you know, in history, cities change and important cities change, but this may have been an important place, as you can tell by its location, um, at the time of Shu'ayb alayhi salatu wasalam. And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala so says, وَلَقَدْ كَذَّبَ Okay, over here, another thing I want to share, share with you. When Allah is talking about prophets and the promise of if you don't accept the prom, uh, if you don't obey the teachings of the prophet or don't accept the prophet, then Allah will bring the punishment. This is called Anba'u Rusul. The story we read on top where they come to Ibrahim and they're telling Ibrahim about his son, this is Qasus al-Anbiya. So Qasus al-Anbiya is general and Anba'u Rusul is specific. And just like a, a different name was given to uh, the people of Madian, Aik, Aika, the same way Ashab al Hijr is the location, and then the people are the Thamud. Okay? And so, وَلَقَدْ كَذَّبَ أَصْحَابِ الْحِجْرِ الْمُرْسَلِينَ And the people of Thamud denied their messengers. And we gave them our signs and they turned away. And they used to carve out from the mountains houses feeling secure. So a loud noise took them by the early morning. And what they did did not help them at all. وَمَا خَلَقْنَا السَّمَاوَاتِ وَالْأَرْضِ وَمَا بَيْنَهُمَا إِلَّا بِالْحَقِّ And whatever we created, we have, whatever we created uh, between the heavens and the earth, we have not created except in a just cause, for a purpose. إِنَّ السَّعَاتَ لَا رَيْبَ There is no doubt about the hour. فَأَصْبَحِ الْأَصْبَحَ الْجَمِيلِ So the hour is coming. So, فَأَصْبَحِ uh, الْفَأَصْبَحِ الْجَمِيلِ so, Fasfaha means overlook or to pardon, okay, or to, you can even say forgive. But Fasfahil, uh, Safhil uh, Jameen, so overlook with a beautiful overlooking. Meaning, just ignore them, O Prophet ﷺ. When the punishment comes, it comes, that's it. And the Day of Judgment is going to come, and that's it. Inna Rabbaka huwa khallakul alim. Indeed, your Rabb is khallakul alim. He's the one who knows how to create, and he's all. He's, he's all and completely knowledgeable and he is the creator. And we create we gave you seven of the Sab'a min al Mathani. Mathani actually is from from meaning twins. We gave you seven twins or seven that are repeated over and over again. Okay? So the translation here says often repeated, but Mathani means two, literally. It can also mean that you have two types of Fatiha. Even in our fiqh, we have one Fatiha with Bismillah and one Fatiha without Bismillah. So this is possible also. And then you have one Fatiha, you could say, with loud Amin and one with uh, low Amin. So this kind of pairing exists with Fatiha. It has a very interesting, um, uh, you know, um, so the Fatiha has an interesting, you can say, background of this pairing type situation. And uh, also, there's a pairing in, in many other ways. Well, Quran al Azim and Surah Al Fatiha is Quran al Azim. Surah Al Fatiha is the great Quran. It is the great recitation. It is the most read surah of the Quran, probably. The same sentence comes in, will come in Surah Taha. And O Prophet ﷺ, do not extend your eyes over by which we have given enjoyment to certain categories. So, azwaja minhum here is, there is those that have and those that have less. So, وَلَا تُمَدَّنَّ عَيْنَكَ إِلَى مَا مَتَّعْنَا بِهَا أَزْوَاجَ مِنْهُمْ وَلَا تَحْزَنْ عَلَيْهِمْ And uh, don't be sad over them. But do what? To the Prophet ﷺ, وَحْفِزْ جَنَاهَكَ لِلْمُؤْمِنِينَ and O Prophet Sallallahu lower your wings. You know, the, the bird lowers its wings over its chicks. 
and covers its uh, wings over them so that no matter what is coming from top, it will shield them from it. So, wahfiz janahaka minal mu'mineen. So, lower your wings over the believers because the, even though it is the job of the believers to, to protect the Prophet وسلم, to show him adab. But in front of Allah, with Allah, he is the one who is high and we are like nobodies. We are the little chicks that need to be protected in front of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So this is one aspect of that. قُلْ إِنِّي أَنَا نَذِيرٌ مُبِينٌ Say, Anna, I am a clear warner to you, O, o Prophet. Say this to them, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. كَمَا أَنزَلْنَا إِلَى الْمُقْسِمِينَ مُقْتَسِمِينَ Just as we had revealed to this, uh, these, to the, to the people who made divisions, or to the separators. كَمَا أَنزَلْنَا عَلَى الْمُقْتَسِمِينَ Referring to the groups that were divided amongst the previous scriptures. الَّذِي جَعَلُوا الْقُرْآنَ الْعَظِيمِ This ayah has two meanings. One is this Qur'an, and one is the word Qur'an also comes from the previous books. In in another place in Qur'an, this becomes more clear. We'll get to that, inshallah. الَّذِي جَعَلُوا الْقُرْآنَ الْعَظِيمِ Those people who made this Qur'an into parts, into portions. Some group took this portion of the Qur'an, another, instead of taking it as a whole, they took it into portions. Then the other meaning is, those people, الَّذِي جَعَلَ الْقُرْآنِ Those two took the recitation of the Book of Allah into parts of the previous people. So both meanings are there. فَوَرَبِّكَ لَتَسْأَلُنَّهُمْ أَجْمَعِينَ And by God, we will, by your Rabb, O Muhammad sallam, we will definitely ask all of them about what they had been doing. أَمَّا كَانُوا يَعْمَلُونَ Regarding what they had done. فَاسْتَعْبِمَا تُعْمَرْ So then you just now declare whatever you have been commanded. Now this ayah clearly tells us this surah was revealed in a very early part where the Prophet's being told to declare, you know, for after which he went to the mountains and he declared the message that where he gave his famous khutbah that لَتُبْ أَسُنَّ كَمَا كَمَا تَسْتَيْكِزُونَ First the Prophet said لَتَمُوتُنَّ كَمَا تَنَامُونَ You will die like you go to sleep on that mountain, he said after calling all the tribes. And Abu Lahab said, لِهَذَا جَمَعْتَنَا Did you gather us for this? So, uh, over there the Prophet said, لَتَمُوتُنَّ كَمَا تَنَامُونَ You will definitely die, like the way you go to sleep. كَمَا تَنَامُونَ And you will definitely be raised the way you wake up every morning. فَاسْتَعْمَا تُعْمَرْ O Prophet ﷺ, declare what you've been commanded. وَعَرِدْ عَنِ الْمُشْرِكِينَ And just turn away from the people who make partners to Allah. Meaning, you don't uh, have to engage in them in their, in their trying to uh, corner you and humiliate you and make fun of you. Just ignore them. Give your message. Okay, if they listen, that's fine. But don't get trapped into their uh, engagement, which is just to trying to bring you down. إِنَّا كَفَيْنَاكَ مُسْتَحْزِيِّينَ Oh, indeed, we are sufficient for you in regards to those who mock you. So you don't need, we, you just ignore them, what they're saying to you, and what the, the propaganda they're doing against you, you just ignore that, and we'll take care of them. الَّذِي يَجْعَلُونَ مَعَ اللَّهِ إِلَهًا آخر. Those who make partners with, uh, 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 يَجْعَلُونَ مَعَ with uh, They make partners with Allah, God's other, 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 other divines, other deities other than Allah. فَسَوْفَ يَعْلَمُونَ Soon you will come to know. وَلَقَدْ نَعْلَمُ أَنَّكَ يُضِيقُ صَدْرَكَ بِمَا يَقُولُونَ Because this was in the beginning and this was very hard on the Prophet because of what they were saying. He was a man of self-respect. He had honor and he had, you know, dignity. And they're now treating him like an undignified human being. صلى الله عليه وسلم وَلَقَدْ نَعْلَمُ أَنَّكَ يَضِيقُ صَدْرَكَ بِمَا يَقُولُونَ We know surely well that your heart shrinks from what they say to you. صلى الله عليه وسلم فَسَبِّحْ بِ فَسَبِّحْ بِحَمْدِ رَبِّكَ وَكُمْ مِنَ السَّاجِدِينَ And just do tasbih of Allah. And what do you do in, 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 uh, in, where, in, in what state? In sujood. وَكُمْ مِنَ السَّاجِدِينَ And be of those that do sujood to Allah. So do tasbih and tahmeed of Allah. Declare the perfection of Allah and His glory, His perfection and His praises. Uh, and be of those people that bow down to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. وَعْبُدْ رَبَّكَ and do uh, be be loyal to your Lord, serve your Rabb, and commit yourself to Allah completely and fully. Until that moment where you have to pass away. You know, you can deny God, but you can't deny you're going to die. So this is why it's called Yaqeen, because it's certain. 
that you're going to die. وَعْبُدْ رَبَّكَ حَتَّى يَأْتِكَ الْيَقِينَ Worship Allah until that time where yaqeen comes to you, which that is absolutely true and certain is going to come to you. So alhamdulillah, we have finished the hijr here. And now we will now look at the number. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Ata amrullahi fala tasta'jiluh. The commandment of Allah will come, meaning the day of judgment, or the punishment upon the Quraysh for uh, not uh, listening to the Prophet and accepting his invitation towards this, towards Islam. Ata amrullahi fala tasta'jiluh. The commandment of Allah will come. Do not be in a hurry regarding this. Subhanahu, he is perfect. Wa ta'ala amma yushrikun. High above, exalted from the partners that they make to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Yunazzilu al-malaikatu bi-ruh. And the angels, they come down with the ruh. Ruh here is wahi, inspiration. So, fanakhtu fihi min ruhi. And we blew into him from our ruh. Is, is, is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Then the Quran is a ruh. And it comes down to the, and the person, uh, the being to bring it down is Ruhul Amin. And it comes down to the Ruh of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. نزل على قلبك بإذن الله So, ينزل الملائكة بروح من أمري. What's interesting, just as a side point for people that would understand a little bit of Arabic, يسألونك أن الروح قل الروح من أمري ربي. It is the commandment of Allah. Ruh is a command of Allah. Okay? It is a bee. Allah said bee and it is of Allah. And so, تَنَزَّلُ الْمَلَائِكَةُ بِرُوحُ مِنْ أَمْرِ Again, the word أَمْرِ is here attached to the word ruh. يَسْأَلُونَكَ عَنِ الْرُوحُ قُلْ أَرُوحُ مِنْ أَمْرِ رَبِّي وَمَا أُوْتِيتُ مِنَ الْإِلْمِ إِلَّا قَلِيلًا And over here, يُنَزِّلُ الْمَلَائِكَةُ بِرُوحِ مِنْ أَمْرِ عَلَى مَنْ يَشَاءُ مِنْ عِبَادِي Over whoever he wants amongst his servants. أن أنزل قو أن أنزل أنه لا إله إلا هو أن فتقون and you warn the people that there is no divine no authority other than Allah سبحانه وتعالى وأن إلا إلا أنا except me فتقوني so fear me خلق السماوات والأرض بالحق he created the heavens and the earth in truth. وَتَعَالَ أَمَّا يُشْرِكُونَ He created the heavens and the earth in truth. He's far above what they make partners to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Now over here in this surah, I wanted to give a little bit of an introduction actually. Uh, this surah is about the bounties and the ni'mas of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Okay. And uh, over here, I just wanted to mention over there, uh, just as a review, um, you had the Yunus. And then Surah Hud. And these two were a pair. And then you had an individual unique Surah, Surah Yusuf. Okay. Then Surah Rad and Surah Ibrahim. These were unique. Or sorry, these two Surah, Surah Rad and Surah uh, Ibrahim, these were a pair. And Surah Hijr, as you saw, its flow was different. And it was an early Makki Surah. Uh, and it was relatively longer. So now over here you'll find the same thing, but in converse, in, in the, uh, like a duplex house. Over here, Bani Isra, Sutul Bani Isra, Sutul Isra, and Sutul Kahaf are a twin. A twin. They're a twin. Sutul Bani Isra starts with Subhanallah, Sutul Kahaf, Alhamdulillah, Alladhi. Over there, Subhanallah, Subhanallah, Asra, Bi Abdihi. Over there, Alhamdulillah, Alladhi, Anzala, Ala Abdihi. These two surahs, is, we will come to see this when the time comes, when we get there, that these two surahs are a pair. But this surah that we're studying now, uh, Surah Al-Nahl, uh, uh, I always get, uh, because of my dyslexia, get confused between uh, Nahl and uh, Namal. They both start with Noon and end with Noon, and it becomes a little bit hard to um, tell sometimes for me. So, um, this is Surah Al-Nahl. And Surah Al-Nahl is very close to Surah Al-Rum and Surah Al-An'am. But... Uh, in some ways closer to Surah Al-Rum, which is talking about the favors of Allah. Usually when we talk about the favors of Allah, we think of Surah Rahman. But as you'll see today, inshallah, that Surah Al-Nahl uh, uh, is actually quite significant in recounting the favors of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Okay, anyway. خَلَقَ الْإِنسَانَ مِنْ نُطْفَةٍ فَإِذَا هُوَ خَصِيمٌ مُبِينٌ And we made man from a, you know, a sperm, Drop nutfa. Uh, فَإِذَا هُوَ خَصِيمٌ مُبِينٌ He first starts as a sperm drop. 
omitted in the uh, the inside the womb of his, the mother, and then he ends up being an argumentative person who tries to, who's clearly like an argumentative being, okay? Uh, or rather, an argumentative in, in in the sense of being an antagonist, in the sense of being an adversary. And for the cattle and the grazing stock, uh, the, uh, the grazing livestock is actually a good term used here. Uh, we created it. And in it for you, in it is warmth and other benefits. And not only that, from it you eat every aspect, the bone, the skin, the meat, the milk, every aspect of this creation is for your benefit. And you ask, oh Allah, where is Allah? Where This is just an accident. Right? You don't think of all the livestock and all the domesticated animals, how they've helped man get to where is man is today, and how it has helped man, you know, uh, to, to benefit man. You know, لَكُمْ فِيهَا جَمَالٍ In it is for you beauty. Now, this is something I have to explain. You, I'll, I'll try to find a picture and show it to you. But that, you know, when you're leaving in the morning, okay? When, you, when you're leaving in the morning and you see a, a human being, and behind him is all the animals that he takes care of, or with him is all the animals he takes care of, and as the sun is rising, it's such a beautiful scene. And then as... In the nighttime, when they have gone to the, you know, to the grass and eaten the grass, and this is just, they didn't put any, the farmer didn't put any effort from himself. This is just natural grass that's on the ground. And then the animals, they eat from this grass, and they're eating from this grass, and they're benefiting from this grass. And then, you know, they now have been satiated by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the rizq Allah has provided from the sky. And now when they're coming back, and as the sun is setting, right, as the sun is setting, right, uh, you let the animals graze, you know, do their thing all day. And now when you're coming back and the sun is setting and you see all those animals that you were taking care of on the way back, these are two scenes, two scenes that are very, very beautiful of looking at the, 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 the relationship that Allah has put between man and you could say the nature. Even though we can talk about what is nature and if man is part of nature or not part of nature or above nature or part of nature. But this scene Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has created is very beautiful. And this scene is being recalled. Right? Lakum fiha jamal. And this is such beauty for you. Right? And in this beauty is, in, is you could say, uh, something that you can, uh, you feel enjoyment. Hina turihuna wa hina tusrahun. Tasrahun. At the moment where you're leaving it in the morning, and when you are uh, coming back, okay? Uh, <clears throat> when, when, uh, so over here, actually, hina turi huna, when you are, when you uh, bring them in, and when you, wa uh, hina tasrahun, and when you go out with them. Over here, let me just show you. So inshallah, let me just uh, show you some of these pictures, so you can maybe inshallah appreciate the uh, hina, uh, this uh, moment where, People are taking their sheep, their goats, their cattle into the, uh, you know, back from the sunset or in, in uh, into the fields at the time of sunrise, right? So just a quick view of some of these, uh, right? Let me just also show you here. Um, let's see what we got here. Uh, so, you know, here's a little boy, and look, all these animals, like literally hundreds of these buffaloes would follow this little boy, right, who is just a little boy, and and, and, and it's, you know, it's it's a very a play, a time of enjoyment. Uh, you can see that. And then here it is, the time of Maghrib. You're coming in, and it looks, it's one of those scenes that, you know, looks beautiful, and uh, you can see the ni'mah of Allah on a, on just nature, and how how important, or how um, beneficial, uh, or how many of Allah's favors you can see in nature. Uh, 
And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَتَحْمِلُ أَثْقَالَكُمْ And they carry your load. إِلَى بَلَدٍ لَمْ تَكُونُ بَالِغِ إِلَّا بِشِقٍ أَنفُسٍ uh, And they carry your loads to a land you couldn't have reached, right? Uh, إِلَّا بِشِقٍ أَنفُسٍ Except you would have uh, gone through extreme difficulty yourself. إِنَّ رَبَّكُمْ لَرَعُوفُ الرَّحِيمُ Indeed, your Rabb is Ra'uf, is kind and Rahim. Wal wal bigal, and he created the khayl, the horses. Okay, wal bigal and the mules. Wal hamir and the himar, the donkey. Litarkubuha wazina, and you, you go on the horses and the mules and the donkeys, and they they make you. They they're also part of your zina. They're also part of your uh, beauty, right? وَيَخْلُكُ مَا لَا تَعْلَمُونَ And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created what you don't even know. Here very quickly, inshallah ta'ala, I want to show you the beauty of these animals that Allah has created. And you know, created for the benefit of man. Uh, and so here, here's just a small look. Allah made these animals to look, make men look beautiful when he rides them. They beautify man in riding them, benefit man when man is riding them. And it's not just one benefit, like there's a whole bunch of benefits. People make their living uh, riding people from one place to the other place using horses, even today. They carry loads. <coughs> the Prophet, by the way, sallallahu alaihi wasallam, while this video is playing, he said, "There's barakah on the nose, in the uh, you know the forehead, in the nasia of the horse." The Prophet said, "There's barakah in it." So you know, there's there's some special barakahs in having horses. And as we come to the end of times, it's important for our kids, for ourselves, to know how to ride horses, because we're going to have to learn how to live in the wilderness outside the grid. And so it'll be very important to, to, to get familiar with these animals that Allah has put so much barakah in for ourselves. <coughs> <coughs> when you look at the connection between these animals and us, uh, one is forced to say, like, subhanAllah. And so, uh, you know, here's a man riding a donkey, right? Here's a donkey carrying loads, right? For you, how, how could Mary, a man carry all these uh, bricks just by himself? But with a donkey, it becomes so much easier. Here is something interesting. Mules reign supreme over horses in Grand Cur Some Some places are such that it's better for mules and donkeys to be at, to travel, than it is even with horses. Uh, so like this is a place in the Prophet we'll see وسلم, some things about the Prophet regarding these animals um, uh, Mu'adh bin Jabal radiyallahu an he says um, uh, and Mu'adh qala kuntu uh, ridfa rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam ala al-himar the Prophet he, Mu'adh, says, uh, Mu'adh says I was seated behind the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam while I was on a donkey يُقَالُ لَهُ uh, يُقَالُ لَهُ أُفِر and his, the Prophet had named him in the, or the people had named him as Ufair. okay uh, over here there's another hadith this is about a mule رَأَيْتُ رَسُولُ اللَّهِ صَلَّى اللَّهِ عَلَيْهِ وَسَلَّمْ يَخْتَبُ عَلَى الْبَغْلَةً by the way, mule is the same animal uh, that the Prophet described it like a mule, the Burak, the animal that went to Miraj with the Prophet uh, what, uh, 
So he, on the day of Mina, the Prophet وسلم, يخطبه, he gave a khutbah, he was giving a khutbah على, uh, uh, بغيلتن, uh, بغيلتن on a donkey. Uh, uh, so, uh, anyway, so this is uh, another uh, saying of the pro this is another hadith explaining the Prophet used to be on horses, used to be on mules, and also the Prophet وسلم, uh, this is a hadith actually about being, so I showed the hadith about donkey, right? The, the donkey that was called Ufair, right? So this is a hadith about a horse, very interesting narration. Just only say that it's a sunnah of the Prophet. Now, of course, we should try to do all the sunnahs of the Prophet. So once in our life, try to get on a donkey. Once in your life, get on a mule. Once in your life, get on a horse. Just because the Prophet did it. And to experience something of something of what he experienced, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Qala فَرَغَ الناس The people, they were scared. فَرَقَبَ الرَّسُولُ اللَّهِ صَلَى اللَّهِ عَلَيْهِ وَسَلَّمْ فَرْصًا So the Prophet got on a horse, Abi Talha, of Abi Talha. بَطِيًّا He was very slow. This horse the Prophet came on was very slow. فَخَرَجَ فَيَرْقُدْ وَحْدُ Okay, and so, anyway, so he was slow. Uh, and so the people came to him and then the Prophet said وسلم, uh, I found your uh, horse to be very fast uh, and then uh, after that day he was never surpassed in his speed because the Prophet rode on that horse so anyway this is just to make the point the Prophet rode on these uh, animals and so, وَالْخَيْلَ وَالْبِغَالَ وَالْحَمِيرَ لِتَرْكَبُوهَا وَزِينَ So you ride on them and you have zina in them. يَخْلُكُ مَا لَا تَعْلَمُونَ And he creates what you don't even know. So, you know, the, even though the horse and the donkey and the mule, they look similar, but Allah creates whatever He wants and He creates what you don't know, right? He creates like these beautiful things, beautiful animals for the, for the purpose of man. وَعَلَى اللَّهِ الْقَصْدِ السَّبِيلِ And upon Allah is the direction that's right. وَمِنْهَا جَائِرِ And from that straight path, then there are other deviating paths. وَلَوْ شَاءَ لَهَدَاكُمْ أَجْمَعِينَ If Allah wanted, He would have guided all of you. But this is not what Allah's plan is. هُوَ الَّذِي أَنزَلَ مِنَ السَّمَاءِ مَاءً لَكُمْ مِنْهُ شَرَابٌ وَمِنْهُ الشَّجَرِ فِيهَا تُسِيمٌ and he sends down rain from the sky, right? From in it is drink. Okay. And by the way, you should learn to collect rainwater because there's barakah in it and it's pure. And when you won't have faucet water, that is recycled water basically from the sewage, when you won't have faucet water, then you're going to have to learn how to collect water from the wilderness how to make wells and how to how to um, <clears throat> get water from the sky and to and to main, and to maintain it and to uh, use it. shajarun, and in it are you could say trees, right? Uh, in which tusimun uh, that you use for pasture. Okay, so the water comes down; it's drink for you. Water comes down and it helps the plants and the vegetations. Yumbitulakum bihi zara. And then this water comes and it uh, it causes to grow uh, the zara, the agriculture, the crops, zaytun and the olives, wal nakhil and the palm trees, wal a'nab and the grape trees, wa min kulli thamarat and all the fruits. Inna fi dhalika la ayat tafakkarun. Indeed, and this are signs for people that think. Water, you know, this system, it's the same system, but it's producing all these things, right? This, it's not like, if something is an accident, it's one-to-one -one relationship. Like, something's an accident, so one thing happened. But an accident doesn't happen, and uh, all these things happen through that one accident. That doesn't happen. This universe is not an accident. From this process, and this is the main thing that I wanted, because in philosophy they discuss this uh, quite often, is it's not just an event, it's a process that's taking place. The water coming down, and then the water, uh, you know, um, coming into the land and, and becoming water for human beings, but also water for these other vegetations that also become food for us. And 
all of this system is is per perfected right just automatically perfected for us it's not like nature nature itself is not you def depending upon how you define the word nature but if you just take it in the secular sense in the non-godly sense uh sec nature itself is not an intelligent uh being but it wh how is it doing all this intelligent tasks for a human being it's not like nature if it's if nature is godless if nature is an accident if nature is godless it doesn't know human beings so why is this doing this all this for human beings this whole process for human beings the sky and the clouds and the rain and the trees all this to just serve human beings why and he subjected you to, to you the night, one nahar and the daytime, washamsa wal qamar and the sun and the moon, one najumu musakharat and bi amri and the the stars they are subjugated by his command. In indeed in this are signs for people that think, that ponder. Like all these things are pointing to all these processes, all these the sun and the moon, all these things are pointing to what all these processes that are involved. The time, the time, the moon and the the phases of the moon and the timing of the moon for whose benefit, right? All this is for who. And he has subjugated whatever he has multiplied for you on the earth of varying colors. Do you know how many colors a human being can see? For all those fruits that are out there, Allah has put something in your mouth, a special taste bud to taste it. For all the colors, Allah has put the, 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 the numbers of corns in your retina to be able to see all these corns. For what? So that you can go to Allah in the Day of Judgment and say, Oh, Allah, you didn't do anything for me. Allah, you didn't care for me. Allah, you didn't deserve to be worshipped. Allah, you didn't deserve my time. Like, what? <clears throat> anyway, so, and as far as taste is concerned, you know, there's six basic tastes. Sweet, salty, sour, bitter, bitter, uh, and, uh, and, um, Umami is a taste of, of the taste of protein that when a certain amino acid touches the tongue, it tells the brain that you are eating meat. And then there's starchy and there's also carbon dioxide, which is a special taste. Like if you eat, drink Pepsi or any of the sodas, there's a special fuzz. And these are the ones that we know as human beings that we can scientifically record. But from these, you know, uh, from bitter, from from sour, from salty, and especially salty and sweet, uh, from all these different tastes, right? Uh, you get millions of different tastes. So, like within sweet, there's so much range within sweetness, and so this is how Allah has made it. And and then, uh, you know, there's the number of colors, color and vision. The human eye can see seven million colors that we know of till today. So it's amazingly amazing. It's it's just, it's not, it can't be just, you know, the human eye is just amazing. <clears throat> so, وَمَا ذَرَاكُمْ فِي الْأَرْضِ مُخْتَلِفًا أَلْوَانُهُ and whatever comes out of the earth of different colors. In this is a reminder for people that think, right? Did nature think? Did nature in the secular sense think, oh, I should have different colors because I need to become beautified because there's no, you know, I'm, why, why, why was the earth made so beautiful? Why were these fruits so lo good looking, you know? Uh, why were there so many? Why did our human eye need so many, seven million colors for survival? It didn't, right? Just like we didn't need the voice box for survival. So then, why, if it's all about survival of the fittest, then why do we have these things? And Allah subhanahu wa taala has subjugated the oceans for you, so that you eat from it fresh meat. And so you bring out from it ornaments, you, you make your jewelry from it, right? And you wear those ornaments. Yeah, 
and you see the ships like going through the sea, like cutting the sea, right? Uh, min fadli, seeking his fadl. لَعَلَّكُمْ تَشْكُرُونَ So that you'll have shukr in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So over here I want to show you very quickly. Here's an example of a boat. You probably have seen this, but I'm just making it more clear of how a boat cuts through the river or the ocean or the water. It literally cuts through and then it leaves this mark, you see. And uh, and why? So that, you know, it, it's been made this way. You can see this here too, uh, how it's cutting through. You can see the mark of it cut, cutting through. And also that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has made the, the issue so that man can ultimately benefit from it. And then there's food in the sea, which from the Hanafi perspective, when you say food in the sea, the main food in the sea, doesn't mean every single thing in the sea. It means the main thing that is used in for food in the sea, which is fish. And according to the other mazahibs, you could have seafood from the other, from everything in the water. So from a fiqh perspective, and even though I'm not doing a fiqh tafsir here today, هُوَ الَّذِي سَخَرَ لَكُمُ الْبَحْرُ لِتَأْكُلُوا مِنْهَا لَحْمًا طَرِيًّا So you will eat meat, and remember, it's meat. So, طَرِيًّا, fresh. وَتَخْرُجُ مِنْهُ الْحِلْيَةً وَتَلْبَسُوهَا And you take out ornaments from it, and uh, so that you wear it. Right? وَالْفُلْكِ الْمَوَاخِرَ فِيهِ لِتَبْتَغُوا مِنْ فَضْلِ and the, the boat cuts through. And Fulk is actually a large ship. Safina is a sh small ship. So a Safina is a... Sh Fulk is uh, a relatively a big ship and how it cuts through so that you seek the pleasure, uh, the bounties of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. لَعَلَّكُمْ تَشْكُرُونَ So that you will have shukr of Allah. Seeing all these things that Allah has done and yet man is blind to it. And because man is blind to the signs of Allah, then man loses himself and becomes like a monster and acts like a monster and acts uh, like he's never going to face Allah and answer to Allah for what he does and ma man acts completely according to his ego and and there's something wrong with the human internally if he sees all these signs and doesn't think for once that look th this all has to have a purpose right and here are just some examples of, of jewelry that is made from the sea the ornaments Allah is talking about and uh, so these are some of the ornaments uh, trying to keep women away from here. So at least if I'm doing tafsir, you shouldn't be able to see that. Okay, next ayah. And he cast on the earth, uh, not jibat, not mountains, but range of mountains, large ranges of mountains that you shift with it. Okay. There's another great scientific fact, which uh, I'll talk about in a second. وَأَنْهَارًا And rivers. وَسُبُلًا and, and roads. You know, you go to Mars and look at the mountains there. They don't give you no roads, right? They're like just, you can't, they're like in, in Earth, they're natural roads. The, the scenery, the from going from the mountains to the valleys, this is natural roads that Allah makes for you to carve through. And then we make, we took those, we take a lot of times those same natural roads and make our artificial roads on top of those roads. And وَأَلْقَى فِي الْأَرْضِ رَوَاسِيَ أَن تَمِيدَ بِكُمْ وَأَنْهَارًا وَسُبُولًا لَعَلَّكُمْ تَحْتَدُونَ So you will be guided. This is Allah's sunnah, that he, he creates something and then he guides something. Allah, just as Allah gave you the ability to have a GPS, he gave you roads in the natural f land for your physical movement. So then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala was going to give you a... A, a natural road, a natural GPS, a natural guidance in the spiritual sense of being a human being. And so Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala did that. On the outside of it, <clears throat> you know, when you say, when the ayah says, وَأَلْقَى فِي الْأَرْضِ رَوَاسِيَةِ And we put mountain ranges or mountains on the earth, أَن تَمِيدَ بِهِمْ That it would shake with them. People that have studied basic geology would say immediately, and this is like absolutely the geniusness of the Qur'an as you'll see inshallah ta'ala. I hope you get to appreciate this because I'm going to give you the two different translations because this ayat, these ayat need, about the mountains need to be understood even in more detail than we already have because there's so much out there and somebody needs to do the research and really look deep into this and bring it all about. 
We put the mountains on the earth. Translation generally is that if uh, we put the mountains there so the earth doesn't shake. Right? You probably heard of this too. <clears throat> Even though, very, very important to keep in mind, in pure Arabic grammar, you can translate the ayah to also say the opposite because of an can also mean that. So, وَأَلْقِيَ فِي الْأَرْضِ رَوَاسِيَ And we put mountain ranges on the earth, أَنْتَ مِيدَ بِهِمْ That be for it to shake. So that the earth can shake. And uh, so that the earth does move. So the earth moves. And this word, tamida, is a very interesting word because one example is, uh, and I'll come into that, but I first want to give you some scientific aspects. But, so a, a, a non-Muslim will say, hey, the earthquakes are caused because of the mountains. The mountains is it's on the boundaries of the te plate tectonics. When the plates hit each other, they go move upward, and because they move upward, you form mountains, and because these mountains are being formed is why you have earthquakes. You know, wherever there's a fault line, there's going to be earthquakes. Whenever plate tectonics are hitting each other, there's going to be mountain, there's going to be earthquakes. So the Quran is essentially, from that limited point of view, wrong. But there's so much, so much, so much more to learn. <laughs> so let me start showing you some things. The Qur'an and the mountains, uh, we generally say, look, the roots of the mountains are deeper than the mountains. So if the mountains are high, but, you know, it's the tip of the iceberg, they they give stability to the earth. And there are geologists who have said this. So, for example, a book entitled Earth is the basic, uh, entitled Earth is a basic reference textbook in many universities around the world. One of its two authors, Professor em Emeritus Frank Press, was the science advisor to the former U.S. President Jimmy Carter and for 12 years was the president of the National Academy of Sciences, Washington, D.C. His book says that ma that mountains have, an un have underlining roots. These roots are deeply embedded in the ground. Thus, mountains have a, sh a shape like a peg. Okay? And then uh, go on to say that, you know, they give uh, stability to the earth. Um I want to show you how these roots are inside the mountain. You can also look at these images. So they do have roots that are deep. Okay, like this would be an example. Um, but what's more interesting is is, is this, okay. Uh, linear mountain chains. So this is like mountain ranges, okay. And plate boundaries. The existence of linear mountain chain on Earth makes Earth unique in the solar system. Meaning, the way we have mountains, chains, no other planet has that. Although there is volcanism in Mars and Venus, because there's heat under the Earth, and or under the planet, there's heat, it needs to come out, right? So, how does this heat get released is, is, is an important question as we're going to look at this. Uh, <clears throat> Uh, and on some larger moons, there is no evidence of linear mountains in the in Mars, Venus, other moons. The linear mountains uh, suggest the movement of the plate boundaries and the existence of active plate tectonics. The process of mountain building evolve, evolved with chains involved involve chains evolves a uh, convergent boundary between two plates. So two plates are going to hit each other. And one of them is going to go up. Just remember this plate going up. Okay. One of the one of the most dramatic ranges on Earth is the Himalayan range. There's nothing comparable to it in the in the solar system. So from the studies of volcanism and structures of mountain chains, maps have been made of the apparent plates associated with plate tectonics on the Earth. So you can do that. Okay. So <clears throat> now let me show you another. Point here. Let's just go on to actually. Um, let's go here first. So the question was asked on Quora from some people: What would happen if there were no plate tectonics? What would happen? Okay, there would be no fault lines. The Earth would be have no way of releasing tension caused by the movement of underground, typically associated with tectonics plates. Though because there are no 
fault lines, the plates would just be one giant big plate, and there would be be no way uh, there with there being no way of releasing the underground tension. So remember, under the earth is hot molten rock, and by the earth moving, okay, it releases this tension. It releases the heat. It releases the tension, okay, and it would build that would cause if not several giant earthquakes around the world once it reached a certain point. The water from the oceans would swell so bad that the tsunamis that hit Japan back in 2011 would look like a tiny ripple in the still water of a pool in comparison. So if you don't understand, it would cause mass flooding around the world while causing buildings to collapse around the world before the flood even began. This essentially would be the creation of new fault lines as the old ones had never existed. And then he continues. Okay. And uh, then this person says, uh, as some of the other respondents have noted, dead, sterile, like Mars and Venus. Venus is superheated, greenhouse, world, hot enough to melt lead. And with 90 degrees times the surface pressure of the Earth. So the surface pressure to the Earth would be so much that it would boom, it would be a violent combustion. Although there's no volcanism, the heat differential between the crust and the atmosphere of Venus is low. So the heat in the air and the crust is low, the difference. Okay, the heat uh, is low and the pressure is so high that would form a continental crust would have a jelly-like consistency, like the mantle, because the mantle inside the Earth is is fluidy, and if that why is it fluidy? It's because it's hot. If there's no movement of plate tectonics, the whole world would get so hot that the Earth would become more like jelly-like. Okay, the Earth would become more jelly-like, and there would be no stability in the Earth. Okay, so now another thing that happens because of that is this. The tectonics are being eroded. Without plate tectonics, the push of the continents upward, because they move upward, like mountains going upwards, right? So there would be nothing making it move upwards. And if nothing is making the earth move upwards, it's going to move. The erosion would result in the continents disappearing under the surface of the oceans. So there would be these violent movements, right? And 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 so so the translation could be done both ways if it was not for the mountain ranges or the chain of mountains the earth would move violently but it's more than that it's more than that it's deeper than that and that's why i'm saying somebody should study this because let me now uh show you uh the meaning of this word to become in a state of motion or commotion okay to become agitated or in a state of violent motion or commotion or violently agitated okay that's the meaning that we've been looking at but there are other meanings that are also significant okay uh, one of the arabic words uh bihim, this madda and is a table okay uh, maida is the same word antamida bihim maida is a table why is it a table why is uh, why is this a similar word because in a table you have food and the food passes around from one person to another person, so passing around. So you have the, I, f I forgot to mention this, the carbon dioxide cycle. And so you have the carbon dioxide cycle going on. You have things going on. Things wouldn't be moving around. If everything was still, the, the things, the treasures under the earth wouldn't come out. It's because the continents move and the earth moves and the mountain ranges are being made constantly. So things from the earth are coming outside. Right, and so, <clears throat> so, uh, so this is one of the meanings. Right, is he became affected with heaviness of stomach. One of the meanings of this is ma madda, ma ma madda, uh, meaning uh, stomach, because stomach holds something. There's something inside the stomach. The word antamida be him, and it holds something for them. Right, if it wasn't for the mountains. Right, it, the things would be withheld from them because there are mountain ranges. Things are coming out. This is the other meaning that you can find from this ayah. Right, so this this is one uh, ayah that has many many meaning. That it gives out new and new things from the earth to them, and and also the rivers come out and subhanallah la'allakum tahtadun and 
and you find pathways so that you'll be guided, right? So there is a lot that needs to be studied in terms of this part of the ayah even now and looking at all of the meanings of antamida bihim and uh, the word uh, all of the meanings and how they relate to mountains and the earth and even hail as what will come in another ayah of the quran it is absolutely astonishing that when you think about it allah is saying look the inside is so hot that if this is not moving the earth would become so hot it would become like jelly like it would move you would move with it but Allah is at the same time saying, Antamida bikum, that the earth would move with you because of these mountains. These mountains cause earthquakes. And so that's one aspect of it. But if it didn't cause earthquakes, it wouldn't have the release that the earth needs this movement, you know, kind of keeps the earth cool, right? If everything was staying where it is, then the earth wouldn't be as cool. So that's like pretty, subhanAllah, amazing that the Quran said this. وَعَلَامَاتِ And they are signs for you. They are landmarks for you. Right? Uh, and also in the same way as you have, uh, you can say mountain ranges as, as kind of like telling you where we are and where we're going and which direction we're going in certain mountains and all that. You have landmarks on earth so that you'll be guided on earth and so you have the landmarks on earth. In the daytime you can use the landmarks of the day, of the earth and at nighttime you use the stars to guide yourselves. And even till today pilots use landmarks and pilots still study the constellation of the stars to know in which direction they're going in. Now tell me, after Allah is the one who's made all this, right? And He's the one who's showing you all this, and He's the one who's saying, look at this and know me, right? Uh, and is the one who created the one like who, فَمَنْ يَخْلُقْ كَمَنْ لَا يَخْلُقْ Is the one who created like the one who didn't create? أَفَلَا تَذَكَّرُونَ Do you not think? Do you not ponder? Do you not give any thought? وَإِن تُعُدُّ نِعْمَةَ اللَّهِ لَا تُحْصُوهَا And if you count the favors of Allah, you can't. You can't. لَا تُحْصُوهَا You cannot enumerate them. You cannot understand them. You cannot grasp the favors of Allah. إِنَّ اللَّهَ لَغَفُورٌ رَحِيمٌ Indeed, Allah is غَفُور and رَحِيم وَاللَّهُ يَعْلَمُ مَا يُسِرُّونَ وَمَا تُعْلِنُونَ And Allah knows what you show and what you hide. وَالَّذِي يَدْعُونَ مِن دُونِ اللَّهِ لَا يَخْلُقُوا شَيْئًا وَهُمْ يُخْلَقُونَ And those who call upon other than Allah, they can't make anything, right? Uh, they can't uh, make anything from neo-exhalio, some, making something from nothing. وَالَّذِينَ يَدْعُونَ مِن دُونِ اللَّهِ لَا يَخْلُقُوا, لا يخلقون شيئا. They can't make these atoms and molecules and the subatomic particles that are the basic raw structure of everything. وَهُمْ يَخْلُقُونَ And they have been themselves created. وَأَمْوَاتٌ غَيْرَ أَحْيَاء They are. Because they can't see the reality, they can't see Allah in, through creation, especially in the time of the Prophet where they were in nature all the time, right? أَمْوَاتٌ غَيْرٌ أَحْيَا وَمَا يَشْعُرُونَ أَيَّانَ يُبْعَثُونَ Right? They are in fact dead, not alive, right? وَمَا يَشْعُرُونَ أَيَّانَ يُبْعَثُونَ And they don't know when they will be raised up in the day of judgment. They don't know, okay? The other way to read this ayah is that Allah is talking about the people that are wor people that are worshipped, and Allah is saying about them: these people that you worship, they're dead. Okay, those that you call other than Allah, they can't make anything. But they were in fact created, and one reason they can't make anything is what they can't do anything for you. They can't make anything for you is they're dead, not alive. Um, and even though they are, and in their state of being dead, meaning from the from a Sharia perspective, now if a shaheed is gone from this world, Allah says, don't say he's dead. But from a Sharia perspective, he's gone to the other world. Another person has gone to the other world, but they don't know even in their graves. And they don't know when they will be raised back. وَإِلَهُكُمْ إِلَهُ وَاحِدٌ And your ilah, your God is one. فَالَّذِينَ لَا يُؤْمِنُونَ بِالْآخِرَةِ قُلُوبُهُمْ مُنْكِرَةٌ وَهُمْ مُسْتَكْبِرُونَ And those who don't believe in the after, قُلُوبُهُمْ مُنْكِرَةٌ Those who don't believe in the hereafter, they, 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 there's a, there is a direct correspondence between not believing in the hereafter and not believing in one God. If you believe in many gods, then everything is in this world and over here and everything is in many forces of God fighting here. The thing is, Islam is a journey to God. 
and things will be decided there and you will meet God there. Okay? And you will answer to God there. Those who don't believe in the hereafter. Right? So Allah starts with ilahukum ilahu wahid. So your Rabb is one, your Allah is one. So here's the connection between one Allah and Akhirah. If you believe in one Allah, you'll meet the more you'll believe in the here Akhirah. The akhirah. If you don't believe in the Akhirah, the less you'll be inclined to believe in one God. Then you'll start believing in no gods or many gods. Their hearts are uh, 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 disapproving of this. Okay? And the reason they don't see themselves going to God is because of their arrogance. Their arrogance has kept their mind and soul distracted from the truth. Okay? لَا جَرَمَ أَنَّ اللَّهَ يَعْلَمُ مَا يُسِرُّونَ وَمَا يُعْلِنُونَ Definitely, Allah knows what they what they do secretly وَمَا يُعْلِنُونَ and what they show. إِنَّهُ لَا يُحِبُّ الْمُسْتَكْبِرِينَ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala doesn't love the proud people. وَإِذَا قِيلَ لَهُمْ مَاذَا أَنزَلَ رَبُّكُمْ And when it is said to them, What is your Lord sent down? They say about the Quran, oh, these are stories of the old people. You know, they don't make any sense to us anymore. These are, you know, especially in the modern times. Oh, you know, religion is thing of the past. We don't need religion, right? These are all fables. These are all myths. So that they will carry their weight of their sins and their burdens on the Day of Judgment. وَمِنْ أَوْزَارِ الَّذِينَ يُذِلُّونَهُمْ بِغَيْرِ عِلْمٍ And they will also carry the burden of the people that they led astray on the Day of Judgment. أَلَا سَاءَ مَا يَزِرُونَ And what an evil weight, what an evil burden it is to carry that on the Day of Judgment. قَدْ مَكَرَ الَّذِينَ مِنْ قَبْلِهِمْ فَأَتَاهُ اللَّهُ بُنْيَانَهُمْ مِنْ قَوَائِذِ فَخَرَّ عَلَيْهِمْ سَقَفْ مِنْ فَوْقِهِمْ وَآتَاهُمُ الْعَذَابِ مِنْ حَيْثُ لَا يَشْعُرُونَ And those before, قَدْ مَكَرَ الَّذِينَ كَفَرُوا مِنْ قَبْلِهِمْ Those before, they, you know, they already plotted. So Allah came to them, okay? Allah came, you know, فَآتَاهُ اللَّهُ بُنْيَانُهُمْ Allah came and plotted against, you could say, their buildings. مِنْ قَوَائِذِ From the foundations. فَخَرَّ عَلَيْهِمْ And so the, uh, so the roof was snatched above them. مِنْ فَوْقِهِمْ وَأَتَاهُمْ عَذَابٍ مِنْ حَيْثُ لَا يَشْعُرُونَ And the punishment came to them from where they didn't even expect it to be coming. So فَخَرَّ عَلَيْهِمْ So the roof just fell upon them. ثُمَّ يَوْمِ الْقِيَامَةِ يُخْزِيهِمْ And then on the Day of Judgment, Allah will humiliate them. وَيَقُولُونَ أَيْنَ شُرَكَاءِ الَّذِينَ كُنْتُمْ تُشَارِكُونَ فِيهِمْ where are those partners of yours, they will be told on the Day of Judgment, that you used to make partners with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Where, where are they? Right? Kuntum uh, tushaquna fihim. And you used to oppose the truth for them. Kuntum tushaquna fihim for them. You used to oppose the truth. Qala ladina utul ilm inna khizya al-yawma wa su'u ala al-kafirin. And those people with knowledge will say, the disgrace, the humiliation, in khizya al the disgrace, this day, right, was so an evil, ala al-kafirin, is, is on those who reject the truth. وَالَّذِينَ تَوَفَّوْنَهُمُ الْمَلَائِكَةُ ظَالِمِي أَنفُسِهِمْ And as for those people, you will, as, as, sorry, as for the angels, when people are dying, you will see the angels, who, those people that did wrong to them, you'll see the وَالَّذِينَ يَتَوَفَّوْنَ ظَالِمِي أَنفُسِهِمْ فَأَلْقَوْ سَلَمَا كُنَّا نَفْعَلْ مِنْ سُوءٍ And so, so when the angels come to take their souls, فَأَلْقُوا السَّلَمَا they will say, oh, we submit. We were not doing anything wrong. They'll go to the angels in their deathbed, turn towards the angels like they've done nothing wrong. But Allah knows best of what you had been doing. And so they entered into the door, the doors of hellfire, for in it, for, they were to remain in it forever. And what a 
evil place it is. What an evil residence it is for people that are proud. The hellfire. وَقِيلَ الَّذِينَ اتَّقَوْا مَاذَا أَنزَلَ رَبَّكُمْ Those people who, who have taqwa of Allah, when it is said to them, what did Allah reveal? You know, every time something is revealed, Prophet Muhammad وسلم, is giving them the information. Allah said this. Allah is saying this. Allah asks us to do this. So, قَالُوا خَيْرٌ لِلَّذِينَ أَحْسِنُوا فِي الْحَذِهِ الدُّنْيَا حَسَنَةً وَالدَّارُ الْآخِرَةُ خَيْرٌ So they said what? خير الله whatever Allah sent is good whatever Allah said is that is good للذين أحسنوا في هذه الدنيا حسنة and for those people who did أحسنوا هذه الدنيا حسنة who perfected their goodness trying to be good they perfected their character they perfected themselves for the good they stood up for justice they fought against evil والدار الآخرة خير and the hereafter is good وَلَنِعْمَ الدَّارُ الْمُتَّقِينَ And how beautiful, what a blessed dar, house it will be for the people who have taqwa in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. جَنَّاتٍ أَذْنٍ يَدْخُلُونَ تَجْرِي مِنْ تَحْتِ الْأَنْهَارِ There will be gardens underneath يَدْخُلُونَهَا They will enter in it. تَجْرِي مِنْ تَحْتِ الْأَنْهَارِ And rivers will flow in it. لَهُمْ فِيهَا مَا يَشَاءُونَ And in it will be whatever they desire. كَذَلِكَ يَجْزِي اللَّهُ الْمُتَّقِينَ This is how Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives to the people that have taqwa. الَّذِينَ يَتَوَفَّوْهُمُ الْمَلَائِكَةِ الطَّيِّبِينَ And when the angels come to take them, right? يَتَوَفَّوْ To take them, right? Being, and they will be طَيِّبِينَ يَقُولُنَا سَلَامٌ عَلَيْكُمْ The angels will say سَلَامٌ عَلَيْكُمْ اللَّهُمَ جَعَلْنَا مِنَ الَّذِينَ الَّذِينَ يَسْتَمِعُونَ مِنَ الْمَلَائِكَ من روحنا سلام عليكم ادخل الجنة بما كنتم تعملون may Allah make us of those people that when the angel comes to take our souls he says سلام عليكم ادخل الجنة enter جنة بما كنتم تعملون because of what you used to do هل يندرون إلا أن تأتيهم الملائكة أو يأتيهم الأمر ربك هل يندرون إلا أن يأتيهم الملائكة أي أو يأتيهم الأمر من ربك so now you know they were being told that the punishment of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is coming. And so now, هَلْ يَنْدُرُونَ إِلَّا أَنْ يَأْتِيَهُمُ الْمَلَائِكَةِ Then this is talking about their individual and collective. So, يَأْتِيَهُمُ الْمَلَائِكَةِ That the angels come to them may be collective or individual. أَوْ يَأْتِيَهُمْ أَمْرُ رَبِّكَ This is definitely the collective. That because either Allah will come with the angels and take your souls and treat you in a in a, not a very positive way or the commandment of Allah will come to destroy the city of Mecca okay كَذَلِكَ فَعَلَى الَّذِينَ مِنْ قَبْلِهِمْ this is how the attitude was of the people before وَمَا ظَلَمُوهُمُ اللَّهِ وَمَا ظَلَمُوهُمُ اللَّهِ Allah didn't wrong them وَلَكِنْ كَانُوا أَنفُسَهُمْ يَظْلِمُونَ but they were wronging themselves they're the ones who had the wrong attitude فَأَصَابَهُمْ سَيِّئَةُ مَا عَمِلُوا And so the evil that they had been doing just came upon them, right? وَحَاقَ بِهِمْ And then they were completely trapped, you could say, بِهِمْ مَا كَانُوا بِهِ يَسْتَحْزِئُونَ By which they were used to make fun of the prophets, make fun of the revelations of Allah, make fun of the concept of the hereafter, right? So on and so forth. And support their false gods over the one true God who is very... It's very obvious to human nature. وَقَالَ الَّذِينَ أَشْرَكُوا لَوْ شَاءَ اللَّهُ مَا عَبَدْنَا مِن دُونِي And those people that will do shirk, they say, لَوْ شَاءَ اللَّهُ مَا عَبَدْنَا مِن دُونِي If Allah wanted, we wouldn't worship something other than Him. مِن شَيْءٍ of anything. نَحْنُ وَلَا آبَاؤُنَا Nor us, nor our forefathers. وَلَا حَرَّمْنَا مِن دُونِي وَلَا حَرَّمْنَا مِن دُونِهِ مِن شَيْءٍ وَلَا حَرَّمْنَا مِنْ شَيْءٍ Nor we would have made something that haram that they were doing with the animals that leaving them making some animals sacred you could say for their idols and stuff like that. We wouldn't have done this if Allah didn't want it. Allah then says, responds to that كَذَلِكَ فَعَلَى الَّذِينَ مِنْ قَبْلِهِمْ This is how the people before they also said they also did فَحَلْ عَلَى الرَّسُولِ إِلَّا الْبَلَاغُ الْمُبِينَ is it on uh, anything on our messenger except that we convey the message that, that you were given the message and then from there you had to choose? So don't don't uh, say this. This would be only valid if the messengers hadn't come. 
In fact, it's still not valid because Allah has already taken the covenant from us before we even came to earth that we would worship nothing but Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But out of his extra mercy more, he sent the messengers to show us the signs, to show us the revelation, to show us the teachings so that we would be more firmly confirmed that yes, there is one Allah. وَلَقَدْ بَعَثْنَا فِي كُلِّ أُمَّةٍ رَسُولًا أَنْ يَعْبُدُوا اللَّهَ وَاجْتَنِبُوا الطَّاغُوتِ And indeed we have raised in every ummah a messenger that what? You worship Allah وَاجْتَنِبُوا الطَّاغُوتِ And you stay away from the false gods. فَمِنْهُمْ مَنْ فَمَنْ فَمِنْهُمْ مَنْ هَدَى اللَّهُ وَمِنْهُمْ حَقَّتْ عَلَيْهِمُ الضَّلَالَ And amongst them, there are those that Allah has chosen for guidance. That, and there are amongst them that the wrong way is just there, is, is, has become true upon them, has become the right upon them. فَصِيرُوا فِي الْأَرْضِ Go ahead, travel on the earth. فَانْزُرُوا كَيْفَ كَانَ عَاقِبَةُ الْمُكَذِّبِينَ And see what was the result of the people that denied the truth. إِنْ تَحْرِسْ عَلَى هُدَاهُمْ فَإِنَّ اللَّهَ لَا يَحْذِي مَنْ يُضِلْ O Prophet ﷺ, you are very eager to give them guidance. فَإِنَّ اللَّهَ لَا يَحْذِي مَنْ يُدِلْ But Allah is not going to guide the person who chooses the wrong path. وَمَا لَهُمْ مِنْ نَاصِرِينَ Nor will they have any helpers. وَأَقْسَمُوا بِاللَّهِ جَهْدَ أَيْمَانِهِمْ And they swear by Allah with their oaths. They say, وَاللَّهِ بِاللَّهِ تَاللَّهِ لَا يَبْعَثَ اللَّهُ مَنْ يَمُوتُ they swear by Allah, Allah is not going to raise the one who's died. بَلَا وَعْدًا عَلَيْهِ حَقَّ Allah says, no, this is a promise from me that I will do this. وَلَكِنَّ أَكْثَرَ النَّاسِ لَا يَعْلَمُونَ But most people, they don't understand this. لِيُبَيِّنَ لَهُمُ الَّذِينَ يَخْتِلِفُونَ فِي So that we will make it clear to them in regards to the issues that they differ in. وَيَعْلَمَ الَّذِينَ كَفَرُوا And so it will, it will be known Okay, so uh, so those who have rejected the truth, أَنَّهُمْ كَانُوا كَاذِبِينَ That they are, in fact, the liars. This is why Allah has made it very, very clear. إِنَّمَا قَوْلُهُمْ لِشَيْءٍ For Allah, إِنَّمَا, إنما قو, قَوْلُنَا Indeed, our statement for anything, لِشَيْءٍ إِذَا, أراد, إذا أَرَدْنَاهُ When we desire it, أَن نَقُولُ لَهُ We say to it, كُنْ be فَيَكُونْ And it is. وَالَّذِينَ هَاجَرُوا فِي سَبِيلِ اللَّهِ مِنْ بَعْدِ مَا ظُلِمُوا And as for those people who do hijrah in the cause of Allah after they've done wrong to themselves, لَنُبَوِّئَنَّهُمْ فِي الدُّنْيَا حَسَنَةً Those people who make hijrah to the Prophet ﷺ, right? We will make them a good place in this world, we'll give them good in this world. وَأَجْرُ الْآخِرَةِ أَكْبَرُ And the reward in the hereafter is even more. لَوْ كَانُوا يَعْلَمُونَ If they only did but know. Where is mercy other than where the Prophet is, sallallahu But the condition is they have to be people of sabr. And they have to be people who trust in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. وَمَا أَرْسَلْنَا مِنْ قَبْلِكَ إِلَّا رِجَالًا إِلَيْهِمْ We have not sent, O Prophet sallallahu before you, إِلَّا رِجَالًا نُوهِ إِلَيْهِمْ Except that we send a man amongst a, a, a man, right, who we reveal our message to. فَاسْأَلُوا أَهْلُ الذِّكْرِ Go ahead, people, ask the people that already know this, the people of the book, إِن كُنْتُمْ لَا تَعْلَمُونَ about this question. بِالْبَيِّنَاتِ وَزُبْرِ And they can show you the clear proofs that are in their written books, in their zubr. وَأَنزَلْنَا إِلَيْكَ الذِّكْرِ And we have sent down this zikr to you for why? لِتُبَيِّنَ لِلنَّاسِ So you make it clear to mankind. This is where hadith comes in. We have sent down this al-dhikr is Qur'an and لِتُبَيِّنَ لِلنَّاسِ مَا أُنزِلَ إِلَيْهِمْ What has been revealed to them? لَعَلَّهُمْ يَتَفَكَّرُونَ So that perhaps they will think and they will ponder and they will think deeply about that. أَفَأَمِنَ الَّذِينَ كَفَرُوا السَّيِّئَاتِ Do those people who have... أَفَأَمِنَ الَّذِينَ مَكَرُوا Those people that are plotting and planning evil. أَنْ يَخْصِفَ بِهُمُ الْأَرْضِ Do they not think that the earth can cause them to be swallowed. Or that punishment of Allah can come from where they don't even suspect it. That Allah can do this if you keep to this attitude. Or Allah would seize them while they're in their activities or in their journeys and so on and so forth. And that nothing can frustrate the plan of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. 
أو يأخذهم على تخوف فإن ربكم رؤوف رحيم or that he would seize them gradually right فإن على تخوف يأخذهم على تخوف he would seize them with fear فإن ربك لغفور رحيم but the fact is that your Lord is kind and merciful right do you, are you, do you feel secure that Allah will not do this to you أولم يرى يروا إلى ما خلق الله من شيء يت يتفيأ ذا ذلا ذلاله عن عن اليمين وعن الشمال سجدا لله وهم داخرون. Have they not considered the things Allah has created? أولم يروا إلى ما خلق الله من شيء and then Allah سبحانه وتعالى says their shadows incline to the right and to the West doing what? Sujjadan lillahi wa hum da dakhirun and they this shadow does sujud to Allah even the shadow does sujud to Allah wa hum dakhirun and they are humble towards Allah subhanahu wa taala so the shadow inclines to the uh, to the uh, to the right and to the left and their sujud is even doing tasbih of Allah subhanahu wa taala so even if you're a kafir you're a sajda your shadow is doing tasbih of Allah wa lillahi yasjudu ma fi samawati wa ma fi al-ard ومن ذا وما من من أرض وما في الأرض من ذابة والملائكة إلا هم لا يستكبرون. and whatever is in the heavens and the earth, it what glorifies Allah. it prostrates to Allah. okay. it prostrates to Allah. surrenders to Allah. right. وما في الأرض من ذابة. and there is not in the earth of any creatures and angels. وهم لا يستكبرون. the creatures of Allah they are not arrogant like the way humans are. And the angels, they're not arrogant, the way humans are. يُخَافُونَ رَبَّهُمْ مِنْ فَوْقِهِمْ يَخَافُونَ رَبَّهُمْ مِنْ فَوْقِهِمْ وَيَفْأَلُونَ مَا يُؤْمَرُونَ And they do whatever they have been commanded. So this is a place of doing sujood to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. وَقَالَ اللَّهُ لَا تَتَّخِذُ إِلَىٰ حَيْنِ اثْنَيْنِ And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, don't take two gods two gods or two divines other than him. Meaning here, two gods or more. هُوَ إِلَاهُ وَاحِدْ He is Allah one. He is إِلَاه the one. وَإِيَّايَ فَرْحَبُونَ And only fear me. لَهُ مَا فِي السَّمَاوَاتِ وَالْأَرْضِ For him is whatever is in the heavens and the earth. لَهُ الدِّينُ الْوَاصِبَى And for him is the deen that is واصبى. That is, you can say, the Deen that has been on consistency, starting with Adam and coming down to Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam until the day of judgment. Then do you fear someone other than Allah subhanahu wa taala? وَمَا بِكُمْ مِنْ نِعْمَةٍ فَمِنَ اللَّهِ Whatever ni'mah you have, whatever blessing you have of your health, of your wealth, of your sanity even of your children whatever ni'mah you have in life of the time you have of the enjoyment you have of the of, of the people around you you have whatever has come to you of his ni'mah فَمِنَ Allah, it is from Allah ثُمَّ إِذَا مَسَّكُمُ الدُّرْ and when some evil touches you something you don't like touches you إِلَيْهِ تُحْشَرُونَ then you go, you know, to him. فَإِلَيْهِ تَحْرُثُونَ And you go to him crying. Okay, something evil happens to him, to you, you go to him crying. ثُمَّ إِذَا كَشَفَ الدُّرُّ عَنْكُمْ And when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala removes that difficulty from you, إِذَا فَرِيقًا مِنْكُمْ بِرَبِّهِمْ يُشْرِكُونَ Then there's a group amongst you that even after that, Allah, you go back and you make partners to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. لِيَكْفُرُوا بِمَا آتَاكُمْ بِمَا آتَيْنَاهُمْ And so they will deny, they will deny بِمَا whatever we have given them. فَتَوَتَّعُوا Then just enjoy yourself in this world. فَسَوْفَ تَعْلَمُونَ Soon you will come to know. يَجْعَلُونَ بِمَا لَا يَعْلَمُونَ نَصِيبًا مِمَّا رَزَقْنَاهُمْ And they make of what they don't know a portion of what they have been given in sustenance. We are the ones that provide, and then you take our risk and then assign it to these different gods. This is what it means. 
They make for which they don't know, no, a portion. Of what we have provided them. By Allah we will ask you, How did you make these things up? How did you make these partners to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? Now the Quraysh, especially they had this concept that the angels are the daughters of Allah. Okay, so Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is going to make fun of them here, saying, oh, you give me the daughters, these angels that are not my daughters, but you yourself don't want daughters, you want the sons. So what is, like, what is this? For God, you're going to give daughters the thing that you don't want. يَجْعَلُونَ لِلَّهِ بَنَاتِ سُبْحَانَهُ They make, give daughter, they attribute daughters to Allah. سُبْحَانَهُ He is perfect. لَهُ مَا وَلَهُ مَا يَشْتَهُونَ And for... And for them is what they desire. For, for, for them is the sons. And for me, you want to make daughters, my, God, the angels, the daughters of God. And when any of them is given the good, the news, Bushira, given the good news of the daughter, his shadow, his face becomes gloomy. Muswadda. Like, and, 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 uh, dark. Uh, and he becomes very uh, full of grief. He hides himself. He hides himself, covers himself from the people. From the evil. From the, from the, from what he, the news he's reached. I, should he keep it in humiliation? Should he touch his daughter with humiliation? Or should he bury her in the ground? How evil it is what you do. You're, humiliate, you're feeling humiliation because you have daughters? That's uh, evil. And then putting them into the ground, that's also evil. This is what happens when you don't have the guidance. This is what happens when you don't have the truth. This is what happens. These are the types of uh, things that people develop in society uh, when they don't have the truth. Those people don't believe in the hereafter. The example is evil. And for Allah is the highest of examples. And the things that, are, that try to reach Allah, their example is high too. And He is all powerful, all wise. If Allah was to take every human being, if Allah was to take mankind to task for their wrongdoings, Allah would have left not one creature on this earth. But if it was to be immediate, then there would be nothing left. But Allah gives you time. Allah gives you time to do tawbah. Allah gives you time to return to Him. فَإِذَا جَاءَهُمْ أَجَلَهُمْ And when their appointed time comes, لا يستأخرون ساعة Then that time is not delayed, even by an hour. ولا يستقدمون Nor does it come before its time. وَيَجْعَلُونَ لِلَّهِ مَا يَكْرَهُونَ وَتَصِفُ أَلْسِنَتِهِمُ الْكَذَبُ أَنَّ لَهُمُ الْحُسْنَ And they make, وَيَجْعَلُونَ لِلَّهِ مَا يَكْرَهُونَ And they attribute to Allah what they dislike, meaning the girls. Right? What tasifu al sinatahum al kadab and their tongues uh, uh, give a description. They assert uh, things that are lies. Okay, that assert a lie, and anna lahum uh, anna lahum al husna for them that they have good. And you know this idea that if Allah gives us good here, then He'll give us good in the next world, or whenever we meet God, then God will give us good. Well. Ta وَتَصِفُ أَلْسِنَتِهِمُ الْكَذَبِ And their mouths, they speak a lie. أَنَّ لَهُمُ الْحُسْنَ That they have, that no good, there will be good for us. You know, in Surah Al-Kahf, this will come out more clearly. 
where the man in the garden he says, oh, eh, I don't believe in the hereafter. I don't think this garden will ever finish. And if I then if I do even go back, even though I don't believe in the hereafter, then I'll have something better because after all, why would God give me something good here? That I'll get some that I'll definitely get something better there. La Jarama, then definitely Allah says, for sure. Anna lahumun nar, but in fact they're going to get the fire. Anna wa anna hum muftarun, and they will be neglected. They will be overlooked. Tallahi laqad arsalna ila umum min qabl, fazayyana lahum al-shaytan wa a'malahum. Allah says, wa tallahi, by Allah, laqad arsalna, we have already sent to many nations before you, O Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. فَزَيَّنَ لَهُمُ الشَّيْطَانُ وَأَعْمَالَهُمْ And shaitan made their actions seem beautiful to them. وَهُوَ وَلِيُّهُمْ يَوْمَ And, 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 uh, the, and the, the shaitan is their wali today. Right? He's their wali. But, uh, and he will be there. This is in a mocking, sarcastic way. that he Oh, he's your friend even today. Or he's even your friend today in the terms of the present time. وَهُوَ وَلِيُّهُمُ الْيَوْمُ this will be your friend on the Day of Judgment. Or in the sense of he's even your friend today, this shaitan that's leading you astray. alim, And for them will be a pain, painful punishment. And we've not sent this book to you, O Prophet ﷺ, except you clarify to them. In the matters in which they disagree in. In which they, ha which they disagree upon the, those basic philosophical questions. Who are we? Why are we here? Where are we going? Who is God? What is his rights? What are people's rights? What are the husband's rights? What are the wife's rights? What is a healthy society like? This is all explained by the Prophet ﷺ. And as a guidance and as a mercy to a people that will believe. وَاللَّهُ أَنزَلَ مِنَ السَّمَاءِ مَا أَنْفَحْيَا بِهِ الْأَرْضَ بَعْدَ مَوْتِئَا And Allah is the one who sent down from the sky water فَأَحْيَا بِهِ الْأَرْضَ بَعْدَ مَوْتِئَا So that He will give life to the earth after it died, after it is dead, after the earth is dead. So the earth was dead, it had no life, then water cycle started on earth, it started raining, and life started. This is one way to look at it. The other is, you know, there's a land, it has uh, no crops, has no fertility, water comes and then gives it life. Both are correct. And in this is, is a sign for people that will listen to the truth. And indeed in the cattle, there is for you a lesson. نُسْقِيكُمْ مِمَّا مِمَّا فِي بُطُونِهِ مِنْ بَيْنِ الْفَرْسِ وَدَمٍ لَبَنًا خَالِصَةً سَائِغًا لِلشَّارِبِينَ And indeed, for you in the cattle, in the livestock, there's a lesson. نُسْقِيكُمْ Allah gives you drink from that animal. مِمَّا بُطُونِهِ From its stomach. From its stomach. مِمْ بَيْنِ فَرْسٍ Right? Between... The ex uh, excretion wa damin. So between the excretion and the blood, and the blood, lab labanan milk, khalisatan. That is pure, uh, and and it is uh you know it 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 um has the quality of. So here just to get an idea, this is where the milk is, where the udders are, right on top of the udder area, right on top of the udder. So this is the udder where you're milking on top of that area on the side this area has the blood and then just on top of that is the intestines when you cut the um the cow in in that area what's the thing that comes out first it's always excretion so right between this blood area and the excretion area okay because now you've already taken out the blood by doing zabiha right you hung up you hung it you killed it the blood is out now you when you cut the stomach right uh, what in in that area? What will, the excretion will come out? And that's the place right by there where the udders are. Okay. So, inshallah ta'ala. Um, so in in lakum fil anami la ibra. Indeed, in the uh, livestock, the grazing livestock, there's a, there is a lesson for you. mimma fi butunihi, and we give you in from its tummy, from its stomach, because the, the cow has more than one stomach. So, min butunihi, from its, uh, from its bellies, okay? So, there's, it's also mentioning that it has more than one stomach, a cow, 
like has, for example, four stomachs. Min bayn al fars between the excretion wa damin and blood. Labanan khalisatan is pure milk. Sa'igan is taste. It's enjoying, enjoying. It gives a lot of enjoyment to sharibin for the people that drink it. Wa min al thamarat al nakhil wa anab tatahidun tatahidun na minhu sakaran. And there are from the fruits of the palm trees and the and the grapevines you take as sakar as intoxicants liquor, you know alcohol, you make you ferment them, warisban hasana and good provisions. Inna fi dalik la ayat al niqomi yaqilun. Indeed, in this are signs for people that would understand. Wa uhi wa uhi ya rab rabuka ila nahli and your rab. Has uh, given uh, wahi revelation to the bee. It takhdi min jibal biyutan. Take uh, in the mountains your houses. Wa min shajar and from trees. Wa min ma yarishun and where they the people they live. So you'll see sometimes there'll be beehives in people's houses, and sometimes there are beehives in the tree, and sometimes there are beehives in the mountain. Okay, and so <coughs> so here's a bee. Hives in the mountain, mountain, mountain area, um, and then you have bees in like this is an example of bee and beehive in someone's house, even though usually they're in the roof area, and then this is beehives in the trees, as the Quran mentioned, uh, and this is Allah's revelation that you go to. These are the places that these are of the different places. These are three places where you go and find your house. So, ma. Kuli min kuli thamarati fasluki subala rabbiki dhulula. Then, thumma kuli, and then you eat min kuli thamarat of all the fruits, right? And then, fasluki subala rabbiki. And then follow the ways of your rab, meaning what your rab has taught you, or, you know, dhulula. Okay? And uh, follow the ways of your rab that he has laid down for you. يخرج من بطونها شراب مختلف ألوانه. And from the tummy of the bee comes honey of different colors. شراب is the word used here, which literally means a drink, but it is honey. مختلف ألوانه. It's different colors. Honey is of different colors. So this is the different varying colors of honey. For example, this is just a small example. Why do they t it look different? Because they're different flowers, and in different flowers, there's different nectars, and and the flowers and the nectars are different in different places. So if you eat your local honey, it'll be according to the the flowers in your area, and the flowers in your area are based upon the, you know the opposite of that, which is the disease of that area. So the honey that's local is usually more beneficial than the honey that's not local. Okay, uh, uh, and then فيه شفاء للناس and in honey is cure for mankind. إن في ذلك لآيات لقوم يتفكرون indeed in this are signs for people that will think and ponder because honey has cure to so many things. Inshallah, there's no shyness in them, so I'm just going to read this list of things that honey is used for to curing. Measles, watery sperm, weak vagina, uh, tubercul uh, tuberculosis, aging face, whooping cough, pre-white hair, lip sore, body heat, uh, baby rashes, overnight pain, mouth odor, joint pain, swollen eyes, bad con, c bad cataract, big tummy. Uh, body pain, malaria fever, weak erection, dry and wrinkled skin, hair loss, asthma, running stomach, chicken pox, pile, food poisoning, constipation, headache, worms of intestine, skin burns, body reaction to drugs, ar uh, arthritis, sore throat, right? And then honey is used in so many medicines, right? Like in cough syrups, for example. It's used uh, for energy. It is used for honey for weight loss, beauty, skin care, immunity, stamina, sleep, hangovers. Even though, inshallah, we don't need to deal with hangovers as Muslims, but digestion, coughs, colds, wounds, and more. Right? So you get my point that, you know, honey is a very, very powerful substance.
and it is amongst the great ni'mas of Allah. And if you are a believer, Allah is telling you to use honey. And Allah is telling you to drink the cow's milk that's pure, not processed, organic milk that is real milk that Allah made. Because whatever processing we do is is like your 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 you know, somebody makes a a great Mercedes Benz or a great car that you love and then they alter it to what they like. And uh, and and maybe it'll sell more flashily, but but Mercedes has a better idea what they're doing. If you tweak their engine, you tweak the transmission the way you want it, you tweak a few things here and there, and it's not going to be of the same quality that it originally was. And this is what we do a lot of times with uh, our 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 uh, our food and our medicines, right? We don't we we have to take what Allah gave us and. What Allah is teaching us in the Quran and in the Sunnah of the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam, because as you know, honey is the Sunnah of the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam. Also, Wallahu khalaqakum thumma yatawafakum. Allah subhanahu wa taala is the one who created you, and soon He will, and He will take your life. Wa minkum man yataraddu ila arzal al umar, and among you are those who return back to a you know a uh, a very old age or go back to an old age and it's as if you know nothing after uh, uh, it's as if after knowing things it's like you didn't know anything in Allah indeed Allah is not in his knowledge and in his power he's complete Wallahu Allah has favored some people over other people in risk. Some people He's given more risk. Some people He's given less risk. Some people He's given different types of risk. Right? Some people have risk of knowledge. Some people have risk of money. Some people have risk of uh, other things. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, over here Allah, <coughs> there are two points to be made. As for the people who have more, why don't they? And they wouldn't, is the point. Why don't they give their risk? Why don't they share their risk with the people that they have as slaves under them? They wouldn't. So why would Allah share His authority, His Godhood? His divineness with others. It's not going to It doesn't happen that way. And the second is that Wallahu fadlala ba'dakum ala ba'd fi risk. Allah has favored some over the others in risk. Fa'amma ladina fadlilu. As for the people that have the fadl, the fadl, they have more. They have more, right? Bi'radi rizqihim ala ma malakat aymanuhum fahum fi sawa. So why don't they share, meaning, so and so, so then they will become, uh, they they will become equal in there. Why don't they share with their slaves? Okay. Afa ni'mat ni'mat Allahi yajhadun. Do you argue about the ni'mas of Allah? Right. Do, because the thing is, is that Allah Subhanahu wa Taala is saying here that you don't share with the people that are less than you, uh, that you think are less than you, even though those are the ones you should be sharing with, because they're not less than you. But at the same time. You don't share because you think you're more than them. Then Allah, who is the authority of everything, He's going to give His complete authority away to some other idol or some other being or some other person? No, that's not going to happen. Wallahu ja'ala lakum min anfusikum azwaja wa ja'ala lakum min azwaji kum banina wa hafadha. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, and He created from you, from yourselves, your mates, your wives. Wa ja'ala lakum min azwaji kum banin. And He made from you from your mate your wives your sons and your wa hafada and your grandchildren warazakakum min at-tayyibat and he provided you of the pure things that are in nature afa bil batil yu'minu wa ni'mat Allah yakfurun are you going to believe in falsehood and you're going to reject the ni'mas of Allah you're going to reject the ni'mas of Allah وَيَعْبُدُونَ مِن دُونِ اللَّهِ مَا لَا مَا لَا يَمْلِكُ لَهُمْ رِزْقًا and they worship other than Allah those things that have no authority or no ownership of risk 
من الثمرات والأرض of the من من السماوات والأرض of the things of the heavens and the earth شيئا at all ولا يست يستطيعون nor do they have the ability or the capability of 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 becoming owners of anything in the heavens or the earth. فلا تضرب لله أمثال don't give examples to Allah إن الله يعلم وأنتم لا تعلمون Allah knows and you don't know. You know, these examples like, well, you know, we have these idols and, you know, the, the, we, we can't really approach Allah directly. So we'll have these idols and they'll get close to Allah and they help us to get close to Allah also is another one, right? You know, they help us concentrate to Allah. But, you know, but you're worshipping the... No, none of that. فَلَا تَضْرِبُ لِلَّهِ أَمْسَانِ Don't give examples to Allah. Don't argue with Allah. إِنَّ اللَّهَ يَعْلَمُ وَأَنْتُمْ لَا تَعْلَمُونَ Allah knows and you don't know. Right? وَضَرَبَ اللَّهُ أَمْثَالًا عَبْدًا مَمْلُوكًا لَا يَقْدُرُ عَلَى شَيْءٍ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives the example of a slave who is, you know, who is mamlukan, his own. لَا يَقْدِرُ عَلَى شَيْءٍ And this slave, he's not able to do anything. مِمَّا رَزَقْنَا مِمْ وَمَنْ رَزَقْنَاهُ مِمَّا رِزْقًا حَسَنًا So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, so there's a slave and he's not able to do it, anything. وَمَنْ رَزَقْنَاهُ مِنَّا رِزْقًا حَسَنًا And then there's the other person he, that we have provided him with something good. فَهُوَ يُنْفِقُ مِنْهُ سِرًّا وَجَهْرًا He gives things, he gives in open and in secret. هَلْ يَسْتَوُونَ Are these two examples the same? Or, or are these two people the same? So here there's one person, he's a slave, but he can't do anything. And another person, Allah has provided him. And out of what Allah has provided him, he's helping other people. He's, are these two people the same? So Allah says, هَلْ يَسْتَوُونَ Are they the same? Alhamdulillah. No, all praises for Allah. He gives, right? Alhamdulillah is used for, he's the one who gives. ضَرَبَ اللَّهُ مَثَلًا Allah gives the example of Abdan Mamlukan, a servant whose own. لا يَقْتُلُوا عَلَى شَيْءٍ He is, he can't do anything. He's just sitting there. He's just a burden on the master. وَمَنْ رَزَقْنَاهُ مِنَّا رِزْقًا حَسَنًا And then the other slave, he's not a burden on the master. He is now, when he gets rizq, he, Allah gives him something and he's now spreading that to other people too. He's doing good deeds. هَلْ يَسْتَوُونَ Are these two equal? أَلْحَمْدُ لِلَّهِ بَلْ أَكْثَرَهُمْ لَا يَعْلَمُونَ But most of them don't know. If you do shirk, you become like that servant of Allah who can't do anything. You have, you're no good. You're dead weight. But if you stay on, if you accept, if you accept the ni'mah of Allah, then you're like that person that can take the risk Allah has given you and share it with other people. وَضَرَبَ اللَّهُ مَثَلًا رَجُلَيْنِ أَحَدَهُمَا أَبْكُمْ كُمْ وَلَا يَقْتِرُ عَلَى شَيْءٍ وَهُوَ كُلٌّ عَلَى مَوْلَاهُ أَيْنَمَا يُوَجِّحُهُ لا يأتي بخير هل يستوون هو ومن يعمر بالأذل وهو على صراط مستقيم. So Allah سبحانه وتعالى says Allah gives another example. Are these now Allah is going to ask another question. Allah says there are two men. ضرب الله مثلا رجلين أحدهما. So the first of them أبكم. He's dumb. He's dumb. Okay. لا يقدر على شيء. He can't do anything. And he's completely a burden on his master. وهو كُلٌّ عَلَى مَوْلَاهُ And he is completely a burden on his master. أَيْنَمَا تُوَجِّحْ لَا يَأْتِ بِخَيْرٍ Wherever you send him to do something, he doesn't bring any good. هَلْ يَسْتَوُونَ Is this equal to وَهُوَ مَنْ And that person يَأْمُرُ بِالْعَدْلِ The one who commands justice. Right? وَهُوَ عَلَى صِرَاطٍ مُسْتَقِيمٍ And he is on the straight path. Are these two people equal? The man who brings no good wherever he goes and the other one that commands justice? Right? This is the difference between the person who has guidance and the person who doesn't have guidance. So a man, he has two slaves. One is blind, can't do anything. He never comes with anything good. And another slave of his, he commands justice. يَعْمُرُ بِالْأَدْلِ وَهُوَ عَلَى صِرَاطِ مُسْتَقِيمِ And he's on the straight path. Are these two equal? Right? So the idea here is that we are, we, there's those people that are in the civil service of Allah's government. Like the angels are doing the work of Allah. 
human beings, some of them like the prophets of Allah and the companions of the prophets, they're like in the government of Allah. They're doing good. They're doing the work of Allah. They're doing the godly thing. They're doing the right things. And then there are those people that are completely astray. They're blind. They're deaf, dumb, blind. They don't know what they're doing. They're like deaf, dumb, blind. And so there are those people that are part of Allah's civil servant, uh, civil service. You can say his government. You know, no one knows the armies of Allah but Him. And so, so many of the human beings, they're, so these both are the slaves of Allah, but one is dumb, he can't he do anything, doesn't come with any good, and the other, he's commanding justice and doing good, and he's doing, he's doing fr fruitful things in the government uh, of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and by the commandment of Allah. وَلِلَّهِ غَيْبُ السَّمَاوَاتِ وَالْأَرْضِ and for Allah is for what for is the unseen of the heavens and the earth. And the hour, the hour of the day of judgment is not like except the you know the blinking of an eye. Oh, or it is even more near than that. In Allah Qadir. Indeed, Allah has the power over all things. Wallahu. أَخْرَجَكُمْ مِنْ بُطُونِ أُمَّهَاتِكُمْ لَا تَعْلَمُونَ شَيْئًا Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala brought you out of the, the wombs of your mothers and you didn't know anything. وَجَعَالَ لَكُمُ السَّمْعَ وَالْأَبْصَارَ وَالْأَفْئِدَةِ And he made for your, you the hearing and the seeing and afida. Afida is your brain. It's fa'ida. What you see and what you hear, the thing that takes the extract of that and comes to conclusions from what you're hearing and seeing, that is afida. Usually translated as the heart, I don't think that's the best translation. Afida is more close to, you can say, the mind or the brain. The, the eyes are connected to the brain and the hearing is connected to the brain. And the brain takes this information and takes out the extracts that information and extracts out that information and comes to some conclusion regarding that. That is what afida means. لَعَلَّكُمْ تَشْكُرُونَ So perhaps you will give thanks. وَلَوْ يَرَى أَوَلَمْ يَرَوْا إِلَى الطَّيْرِ مُسَخَرَاتٍ فِي جَوْفِ السَّمَاءِ Do you not see the birds that are in the uh, that are subjected in the in the in the in the sky in the atmosphere جَوْفِ السَّمَاءِ وَمَا يُمْسِكُهُنَّ إِلَّا اللَّهِ No one has uh, hold of them but Allah subhanahu wa taala. إِنَّ فِي ذَلِكَ لَآيَاتٍ لِقَوْمِ يُؤْمِنُونَ Indeed, and these are signs for people that will believe. وَاللَّهُ جَعَلَ لَكُمْ مِنْ بُيُوتِ بُيُوتِكُمْ سَكَنًا وَجَعَلَ لَكُمْ فِي جُلُودِ أَنْعَامِ بُيُوتًا And Allah has made for you, uh, from your home, has made your homes. وَاللَّهُ جَعَلَ لَكُمْ مِنْ بُيُوتٍ From amongst your houses, there are some that are a place of tranquility. سَكَنًا وَجَعَلَ لَكُمْ مِنْ جُلُودِ الْأَنْعَامِ بُيُوتًا And some, and, and has made from the, uh, from the skin of the livestock, right, you have made houses from the hides of the animals. You have made tents in which you live, right? Was, وَتَسْتَخِفُونَهَا يَوْمَ الْ and you and you uh, um, and you take these uh, animal hides and make it into tents and homes. And why? That's made easy for you to you know move this as a tent rather than a whole house. The day you're traveling. And on the days of your uh, where you're staying in a certain place. أَصْوَافِهَا وَأَوْبَارِهَا وَأَشْعَارِهَا أَثَاثًا وَمَتَاءً إِلَاهِينَ And from their wool, أَصْوَافِهَا وَأَوْبَارِهَا And their hairs, uh, uh, sorry, and their furs, وَأَوْبَارِهَا وَأَشْعَارِهَا And their hairs, أَثْنَانًا There is, uh, you could say, uh, you know, um, these things like uh, furnishings and furnitures and mata and ilahin they have a benefit for me and utility for you and you can say an enjoyment for you to a certain time wallahu ja'ala lakum mimma khalaqa and allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wallahu ja'ala lakum mimma khalaqa dhilalan wa ja'ala lakum min al-jibali aknana wa ja'ala lakum sarabila taqikum al-harra wa sarabila taqikum ba'sakum Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, over here Allah is mentioning a few things that protect you. So number one, وَاللَّهُ جَعَلَ لَكُمْ مِمَّا خَلَقَ ذِلَالًا Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the one who created for you the shadows. You can stay under the shadow of a tree, a shade of a tree. وَجَعَلَ لَكُمُ الْجِبَالَ أَكْنَانًا 
and he's made in the mountains, whether through caves or through other means, uh, you know, a place of refuge. وَجَعَلَ لَكُمْ صَرَابِيلَ تَقِيكُمُ الْحَرَّةِ And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has made clothings for you that save you from the heat of the, of the day. وَصَرَابِيلَ تَقِيكُمْ بَعْسَكُمْ And clothings that save you from difficulty, you know, from some pain or some from hurt, that because the cloth is there, it protects you. كَذَلِكَ يُتِمُّ نِعْمَتَهُ عَلَيْكُمْ This is how Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala completes His favor for you. لَعَلَّكُمْ تُسْلِمُونَ Why does Allah do this? Why does Allah do this? Allah gives you all these things, the clothes and everything, so you will surrender to Him. So you will say, Alhamdulillah to Him. So you will... Be, uh, so you will acknowledge his favor to you. فَإِن تَوَلَّوْا فَإِنَّمَا عَلَيْكَ الْبَلَاغُ الْمُبِينَ And if you turn away, it is on you only to convey the truth, O Prophet ﷺ. يَعْرِفُونَ نِعْمَةَ اللَّهِ ثُمَّ يُنْكِرُونَهَا They recognize the ni'mas of Allah and then they feel uh, opposed to it. They don't want to give in. They don't want to surrender. They don't want to give in to Allah. May Allah make us of those people that surrender to Him and realize the ni'mas he's given us and by realizing the ni'mas he's given us helps us and makes us easy for us to surrender to him kafirun. most of them they are disbelievers on the day when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will, re uh, will uh, resurrect from every nation, min kulli ummatin shaheed, Allah will bring a witness, a prophet, who will bear witness against the people. kafaru, And then it will not be permitted for the people that disbelieve, wahum yusta'tabun, right? Nor will they be asked, nor will they be allowed to give any, you know, uh, any, you can say, excuses or any um, anything to let them out. They won't be allowed to make any amends. That's it. No chances. And when the people that did un injustice, when they did injustice, and in this case, in the, in the context of the surah, the injustice of not recognizing or denying the ni'mas of Allah, when the people that did wrong, when they see the punishment of Allah, فَلَا يُخَفَّفُ عَنْهُمْ It will not be lightened for them. وَلَا هُمْ يُنْذَرُونَ Nor will there be given any respite or any reprieve or any time. وَإِذَا الَّذِينَ أَشْرَكُوا شُرَكَاءَهُمْ And when the people that did shirk with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, when they see their part, the partners that they made, all these idols or people or whoever, قَالُوا رَبَّنَا هَؤُلَاءِ شُرَكَاءُنَا الَّذِينَ كُنَّا نَدْعُوا مِن دُونِكْ They will say, uh, Rabbana, O oh our Lord, shurakaana. These are the partners that we made. Kunna uh, dunik that we used to worship other than you, right? Faalku uh, innakum And then they themselves will say what? And wa alqu ilayhim, and they'll say to them, alqul the statement, annakum lakadibun. You are liars! You are liars! We never said, you know, make us partners to Allah. And it could be true, like some people are worshipped. Maybe they were pious people, but then people are worshiping them. They will say, no, you are liars. We never said this. And then there may have been some people that were t telling people to uh, bow down to them. Some human beings in the name of religion were saying, bow down to us. And then you know they will then that day deny that. And they will implore to Allah on that day for submission. And lost from them is that opportunity for what they used to invent against Allah. Allah subhanahu wa says, and those who have disbelieved and الَّذِينَ كَفَرُوا وَصَدُّوا عَنْ سَبِيلِ اللَّهِ And took people away from the path of Allah. زِدْنَاهُمْ عَذَابَ Those people that actively did this, they will have the increased punishment. فَوْقَ الْعَذَابَ Over the punishment. بِمَا كَانُوا يُفْسِدُونَ For the chaos and the corruption that they caused. يَوْمَ نَبْعَثُوا فِي كُلِّ أُمَّةٍ شَهِيدًا عَلَيْهِمْ مِنْ أَنفُسِهِمْ That day when we will come with a witness against every people amongst themselves, meaning a prophet of Allah. وَجِعْنَا بِكَ شَهِيدًا عَلَى هَؤُلَاءِ And this must be very hard on the Prophet ﷺ, where Allah says, جِعْنَاكَ وَجِعْنَا بِكَ And we will bring you 
shahidan as a witness ala haula as a shahi as a witness against all of these that you've been sent to wa nazzalna alayka al kitaba tibyana li kulli shay and we've sent down to you the book that clarifies everything huda wa rahmatan wa bushra lil muslimin there is a guidance and rahma and bushra lil muslimin allahumma ij'al quran huda wa rahmatan wa bushra lil muslimin amin إن الله يأمر بالأذل والإحسان وإيتاء ذي القربى وينهى عن الفحشاء والمنكر والبغي يعذكم لعلكم تذكرون إن الله يأمركم بالأذل الله commands you to do justice one day the prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم met some people and these were part of the ayat the prophet read to them in doing that they said what does your religion teach so then the prophet read these ayat إن الله يأمركم يأمر بالأذل الله سبحانه وتعالى commands justice والإحسان and more than justice to do good above and beyond what is justice وإيتاء ذي القربى and that you uh you know uh that you um give the rights you can say to the qurba to your near ones wa yanha anil fahsha wal munkar and forbids you from indecent things and wrong things wal baghi and rebellion ya'idukum la'allakum tadhakkarun allah warns you of these things so that perhaps you will be reminded perhaps you will remember wa aw uh وَأَوْفُوا بِأَحْدِ اللَّهِ إِذَا أَحَدْتُمْ And fulfill the covenants of Allah when you make them. وَلَا تَنْقُذُوا أَيْمَانَ بَعْدَ تَوْكِيدِهَا And don't break your uh, trust after rectifying it. After you said yes and said I'll take care of this or whatever. Your trusts are, don't break them. وَقَدْ جَعَلْ جَعَلْتُمُ اللَّهُ عَلَيْكُمْ كَفِيلًا And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has already made you, and Allah has already made you responsible with Allah. So over here, specifically with Allah. وَأَوْفُوا بِأَحْدِ اللَّهِ إِذَا أَحَدْتُمْ Keep the promises when you make them. وَلَا تَنْقِذُوا أَيْمَانَ بَعْدَ تَوْكِيدِهَا And don't break the trust after you have rectified it. وَقَدْ جَعَلْتُمُ اللَّهُ عَلَيْكُمْ كَفِيلًا Allah has already made you responsible. When you were there before Allah, and Allah said, أَلَسْتُ بِرَبِّكُمْ Am I not your Lord? And you said, yes, you already became responsible. إِنَّ اللَّهَ يَعْلَمُ وَمَا تَفْعَلُونَ And Allah knows fully well what you do. غزلها من بعد قوة أنكثا تتخذونها أي أيمانكم دخلا بينكم أن أن تكون أمة هي أرباء من أم أم. Here is an indirect, you can say, um, discussion with the people of Medina, the Jews in Medina particularly. ولا تكون كالتي نقضت غزلها بعد قوة. You know, there's an old woman. She's uh, making her yarn and her wool, okay, and then she gets un it gets untied. So Allah says, "Don't be." La takunu kaladi nakadat ghazlaha. She uh she untwists her her thread, her spinning that she spun the thread with, and the the which the she was making. Nakasa, okay, and uh after it. It, you know, she had spun it correctly and it was strong. Like you Jews were saying to the, uh, to the Quraysh that look, a prophet is coming, a prophet is coming, a prophet is coming. And now you're saying, you're kind of like stepping back. Oh, this is not where we wanted this to go. And this is going with Banu Ismail instead of with us. And, and so now you're stepping back. So don't be like that old woman who is like, uh, making her yarn and, and, and it's strong but it'll become she'll by mistake because she's old age and she'll do something and it'll the threads will just untie themselves right so don't be like that person that lady you take your oaths as a deception amongst yourselves why that there will be one community then it'll become more numerous more growing more nurturous more favored so then now Banu Ismail, the Arabs will be more favored over the Jews, right? So because of this fear, أَن أُمَّةٌ هِيَ أَرْبَى مِنْ أُمَّةٍ That the, the Arab community will become more favored because uh, than over the Jewish community because of this fear. Don't become like that woman that undoes her yarn after it's strong. Right now you have, you had been, you came to Medina, your forefathers came to Medina, you knew a prophet was coming, and now that he's here, don't be like that lady. إِنَّمَا يَبْلُوكُمُ اللَّهُ بِهِ Indeed, Allah is testing you with this. This is a big test, but this is the test of Allah. 
يوم القيامة ما كنتم في تختلفون. And Allah subhanahu wa taala will make everything clear to you about the things that you differ in. You know, you're you're now stepping back and trying to see, oh, what does this prophet say? And oh, what does he say? Oh, well, that's not the say. That's you know all these excuses. Even though it's not a direct conversation with Ahlul Kitab yet, but here the the beginning of that has happened now. It's interesting because you know it it seems like it 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 happened. Uh, uh, it, you know, it started this way, and then Allah subhanahu wa taala has a direct conversation with them too. وَلَوْ شَاءَ اللَّهُ لَجَعَلَكُمْ أُمَّةً وَاحِدَةً If Allah wanted, He would have made you one nation. وَلَكِنْ يُضِلُّ بِهِ مَنْ يَشَاءُ وَيَهْدِي مَنْ يَشَاءُ But Allah subhanahu wa taala leads astray whoever He wants, and He guides whoever He wants. وَلَتُسْأَلُنَّ أَمَّا كُنْتُمْ تَعْمَلُونَ And you will be definitely asked about the things that you used to do. وَلَا تَتَخِذُوا أَيْمَانَكُمْ دَخَلًا And don't make your oaths as a mean of betrayal or deception بَيْنَكُمْ between you. فَتَنَزَّلَ قَدَمٌ بَعْدَ ثُبُوتِهَا And here Allah is again talking to the Ahlul Kitab, the people of the book, particularly the people of Medina, who the Quraysh is now talking to. You know, this is like that Prophet, you know, the stories of the Qur'an and everything is similar to the Christians and the Jews. So the people of Quraysh are talking to them. وَلَا تَتَّخِذُوا أَيْمَانَكُمْ دَخَلًا بَيْنَكُمْ Don't take, make your oaths as a deception amongst yourselves. فَتَنَزَّلَ قَدَمٌ so you came down with a strong, firm, firm hold when you came to Medina. But the, uh, you know, so so don't come down. Uh, uh, so after this strong step, بعد ثبوتها تذهب سو, and then you would come with some evil instead, and you know you would you uh, what uh, what the, uh, what uh, sorry what the تزوق سو بما صدقتم عن سبيل الله. Don't become weak after you were strong. And the result will be, you will taste the evilness bima sadatum of what you stop people from an sabilillah from the path of Allah. Walahum adabun alim, and for them is a painful punishment. So again, this is talking to the people of Medina indirectly. Well, directly, but without specifying them. Ya ahl al kitab, O people of the book. ولا تشتروا بأحد الله ثمنا قليلا and don't exchange or purchase the promise of Allah for a small price. You want this dunya for akhirah. For a small price, إنما إنما إن الله هو خير لكم إن كنتم تعلمون. Indeed, what Allah has for you is better for you. Allah knows where to put it, and you have to just accept that. Otherwise, you will face the consequences. وما عندكم ينفد، and whatever is with you will finish. وما عند الله باق، and what is with Allah will always remain. وَلَنَجْزِيَنَّ الَّذِينَ صَبَرُوا أَجْرَهُمْ بِأَحْسَنِ مَا كَانُوا يَعْمَلُونَ and we will give the reward to those people that have sabr. أَجْرَهُمْ بِأَحْسَنِ مَا كَانُوا يَعْمَلُونَ For the best things that they used to do. We will give them the reward for that. وَمَنْ عَمِلَ صَالِحًا مِنْ ذَكَرٍ أَوْ أُنْثَى Whoever does good deeds of the male or the female, وَهُوَ مُؤْمِنٌ And he is a mu'min. فَلَنُحْنِيَنَّهُ حَيَاطًا طَيِّبًا We will give him a beautiful life. Even if life is difficult, even if it's in a struggle, but that struggle feels beautiful. Especially if it's the truth. The, the truth is like the haq. The truth is like a drug. And Allah and Islam and Quran and the truth and the beauty of Islam and the brotherhood of Islam. You know, even if it's under duress, even if it's in difficult circumstances, even if it's under persecution, it still has its... its, its uh, It's beauty, it's goodness. وَلَنَجْزِيَنَّهُمْ أَجْرَهُمْ أَحْسَنَ مَا كَانُوا يَعْمَلُونَ And Allah again emphasizes, and we will definitely give them the good deeds of the, we will give them the reward of the best deeds that they used to do. وَإِذَا قَرَأْنَا الْقُرْآنَ فَاسْتَعِذْ بِاللَّهِ When you read, recite the Qur'an, seek for uh, refuge from Allah. مِنَ الشَّيْطَانِ الرَّجِيمِ From the shaytan that is outcast. إِنَّهُ لَيْسَ لَهُ سُلْطَانَ عَلَى الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا وَعَلَى رَبِّهِمْ يَتَوَكَّلُونَ He has no control. And Allah make us amongst those people who shaitan has no control over. إِنَّهُ لَيْسَ لَهُ سُلْطَانَ عَلَى الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا وَعَلَى رَبِّهِمْ يَتَوَكَّلُونَ On those people who believe and those people that trust in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. إِنَّمَا سُلْطَانُهُ عَلَى الَّذِينَ يَتَوَلَّوْنَهُ وَالَّذِينَ هُمْ بِهِ مُشْرِكُونَ And you know, he has control over those people who become his ally by doing magic or summoning him and so on, or his stooges. And they do shirk. They use these idols to get close to shaitan. Actually, that's, you know, idol worship is Satanism. 
وَإِذَا بَدَّلْنَا آيَةً مَكَانَ آيَةٍ And when we substitute an ayah, a verse for a verse. Okay? وَاللَّهُ أَعْلَمُ بِمَا يَنْزِلُ Allah knows what to send down. Now it is possible the Ahlul Kitab, they were saying, Oh, but this teaching of Islam is uh, different or something like this. So maybe Allah is referring to this. وَإِذَا بَدَّلْنَا When we change a, a verse for a verse. So they were making this as an excuse. قَالُوا إِنَّمَا أَنْتَ مُفْتَرْ Oh, you're somebody just inventing this. You're just inventing this. بَلْ أَكْثَرَهُمْ لَا يَعْلَمُونَ Most of them don't know. Because even within the Ahlul Kitab, particularly the Jewish community, they knew that some of the laws had changed over time. So they knew this, that some there's some small alteration, but the basic teachings are always the same. قُلْ نَزَّلَهُ رُوحُ الْقُدُسِ مِنْ رَبِّكْ بِالْحَقِّ Say the Ruh Al-Qudus, Jibreel alayhi salatu wasalam, the, uh, has brought this in truth. لِيُثَبِّتَ الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا هُدًا وَبُشْرًا لِلْمُسْلِمِينَ And to make firm the believers and... Uh, يُثَبِّتَ الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا And to make firm the believers and وَهُدًا وَهُدًا And as a guidance and بُشْرًا لِلْمُسْلِمِينَ And بُشْرًا لِلْمُسْلِمِينَ And as a good tiding to the people who have surrendered themselves to Allah. وَلَكَدْ نَعْلَمُ أَنَّهُمْ يَقُولُونَ إِنَّمَا يُعَلِّمُهُ بَشَرْ And Allah says, and we know what they're saying. Now the Quraysh and others are saying, oh, maybe some man is teaching him. إِنَّمَا يُعَلِّمُهُ بَشَرْ لِسَانُ الَّذِي يُلْحِدُ إِلَيْهِ أَعْجَمِيُونَ They say, oh, and the man that's teaching him, he must have a non-Arabic tongue. Okay? Non-Arabic because uh, the Arabs, they knew amongst themselves, and, it, and no Arab can speak this type of language that is coming from Quran. So they're saying, oh, it must be some foreign man that the Prophet has hidden in his house and is teaching him, لِسَانُ الَّذِي يُلْحِدُ إِلَيْهِ أَعْجَمِي This is the tongue of someone who speaks, uh, is non-Arabic. But in fact, هَذَا لِسَانٌ عَرَبِيٌ مُبِينٌ But in fact, this is clearly Arabic language. That you're saying that the uh, the Prophet is getting his dictation from someone. It's not like that. This is clear in Arabic language. And this is the, you know, the best. This is what happens when you have excuses and don't want to accept the truth. And those people don't believe in the signs of Allah. Allah will not guide them. And for them is a painful punishment. يَفْتَرَ الْكَذِبَ الَّذِينَ لَا يُؤْمِنُونَ بِآيَاتِ اللَّهِ It is those people who invented the lies, who don't believe in the ayat of Allah, the signs of Allah. وَأُولَئِكَ هُمُ الْكَاذِبُونَ They are the people who are the liars. وَمَنْ كَفَرَ بِاللَّهِ بَعْدَ إِمَانِهِ And whoever disbelieves and denies Allah after having iman in Allah, إِلَّا مَنْ أُكْرِهَا وَقَلْبُهُ مُطْمَعٍ بِالْإِمَانِ Except for the one he dis... He is, and he was forced, ukriha. وَقَلْبُهُ مُطْمَعِنْ بِالْ But his heart is at ease with iman. وَلَكِنْ مَنْ شَرَهَ بِالْكُفْرِ But he whose emotions are open to kufr, صَدْرًا His heart, his chest is open to, uh, open to kufr. فَعَلَيْهِمْ غَضَبٌ مِّنَ اللَّهِ Upon them is the anger of Allah. May Allah protect us. وَلَهُمْ عَذَابٌ عَظِيمٌ And for them is a painful punishment. ذَلِكَ بِأَنَّهُمْ اسْتَحَبُّ الْحَيَاةُ الدُّنِيَ عَلَى الْآخِرَةِ This is because they chose the life of this world over the hereafter. وَأَنَّ اللَّهَ لَا يَهْدِ الْقَوْمِ الْكَافِرِينَ And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is not going to guide the wrongdoing people. أُولَئِكَ الَّذِينَ تَبَعَ عَلَىٰ قُلُوبِهِمْ وَعَلَىٰسْ وَسَمْعِهِمْ وَأَبْصَارِهِمْ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is going to put a seal over their hearts and their hearings and their sight. أُولَئِكَ الْأَهُمْ أُولَئِكَ هُمُ الْغَافِلُونَ They are the people that are heedless. لَا جَرَمَ أَنَّهُمْ فِي الْآخِرَةِ هُمْ خَاسِرُونَ And definitely, they are the people in the hereafter that will be in loss. ثُمَّ إِنَّ رَبَّكَ لِلَّذِينَ هَاجَرُوا مِن بَعْدِ وَفُتِنُوا ثُمَّ جَاهَدُوا وَصَبَرُوا إِنَّ رَبَّكَ مِن بَعْدِهِ لَغَفُورٌ رَحِيمٌ And over here Allah predicts and tells the Muslims what they can expect in the future. ثُمَّ And then, إِنَّ رَبَّكَ لِلَّذِينَ Your Rabb will for those people, Hajaru, that did Hijrah, min ba'di futinu, after they were persecuted in Mecca, thumma jahadu, then they had to do jihad in the cause of Allah, wa sabaru, and they had to do sabar in the cause of Allah, inna rabbaka min ba'dihi, ba'diha la ghafur rahim, after such a, such difficulties and trials, and all these different phases, inna rabbaka min ba'diha, after all this, la ghafur rahim, he is ghafur and rahim. Yawma ta'ti kullu nafsim, تُجَادِلُ عَنْ نَفْسِهَا 
that day when every soul will come disputing for itself, you will argue for yourself. And every soul will be given exactly what it has earned. And they will not be wronged. Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives another example here. Allah gives the example of city. كانت آمنة مطمئنة It was peaceful, it was safe. يأتيها رزقها رغدا من كل مكان And it, uh, provisions and fruits came to it. Risk came from it from, from, uh, from all the places. <coughs> from all the places. فكفرت So the people of the town, what did they do? They disbelieved. بأن أم الله Regarding the favors of Allah. فأزاقها so Allah made that city taste. فأزاقها الله لباس الجوع والخوف بما كانوا يصنعون. So Allah made them taste the punishment of starvation and fear. Why? So they'll turn back to Allah. بما كانوا يصنعون for the evil that they were doing. So there are three things here. One is the day of judgment, which is appointed time, doesn't change. Number two, a messenger comes, you deny him, you'll be annihilated. That also doesn't change. But then, before that annihilation, small punishments come. So, this is what's referring to, and you'll see this in the seerah of the Prophet ﷺ, that there was some years of famine in Mecca, also. <coughs> then Allah says, وَلَقَدْ جَاءَهُمْ رَسُولٌ مِّنْهُمْ A messenger came to them. Then a messenger, uh, وَلَقَدْ جَاءَهُمْ رَسُولٌ A messenger has already come to them. فَكَذَّبُوهُ And they denied him. And, you know, this could be referring to many of the old old uh, civilizations the Prophet has already come to them. And they denied him. Allah took them for the punishment. And they were the unjust people. Eat of the things that Allah has provided for you that's halal and tayyib and pure and organic and clean and not, it doesn't have a uh, the the um, overdone pesticides and not genetically manipulated uh, things and and if you read uh, my go back to my tafsir sultan anam I show like how the cutting of the animal should be done the animal himself should surrender uh, to Allah subhanahu wa taala and to the person doing the zabiha washkuru ni'mat Allahi and do shukr of Allah's ni'mas in kuntum iyahu ta'budun if you truly worship Him inna ma haram alaykum al Indeed, haram for you is the dead and the blood and the flesh of the of the of the pig. Now, just like for the ocean, we talked about the ocean. The main reason of ocean is fishing, so it, it doesn't include the other animals. It's looking at the main thing from the Hanafi fiqh. In the same way, in the Hanafi fiqh, lahm al khinzir is referring to not the meat of the pig. That's the main function of the pig, but but because of that, everything else is made haram too. Over there, what is halal is the main thing, and the other things are not. Included in the Hanafi fiqh, but they are included in the other amongst the other other fuqaha. وَمَا أُهِلَّ لِغَيْرِ اللَّهِ and what is very, uh, whatever is sacrificed, made, uh, may, uh, whatever is sacrificed in the name of other than Allah. فَمَنِ الطُّرَّ غَيْرَ بَاغٍ وَلَا عَادٍ as for the one who is forced, neither بَاغٍ nor desiring it وَلَا عَادٍ nor going beyond bounds. Now, if you're going to eat a pig, does it mean now you say Bismillah and eat ten uh, plates of a pig? No, not desiring it. And not going beyond bounds. If I know Allah Ghafur Rahim, indeed Allah is Ghafur Rahim. No one has the right. <coughs> and Muslims should be very careful saying this is halal and that's haram and that's haram and this is halal. No. Haram number one is a very big term. It's like murder, it's alcohol, it's big things. Haram is haram. Those are forbidden things, absolutely forbidden. وَلَا تَقُولُ لِمَا تَصِفُ أَلْسِنَتِكُمْ Do not say with your tongues in, 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 uh, in trying to uh, assert the falsehood. هَذَا حَلَالٌ وَهَذَا حَرَامٌ Or leaving out certain animals. This is halal for our idols. Or this is haram for certain other idols or for human beings. هَذَا حَرَامٌ لِتَفْتَرُوا عَلَى اللَّهِ الْكَذِبَ So you invent a lie against Allah. إِنَّ الَّذِينَ يَفْتَرُونَ عَلَى اللَّهِ الْكَذِبَ As for the people that invent a lie against Allah. لا يفلحون. They will not have success. متاع قليل 
just a small enjoyment they have. وَلَهُمْ عَذَابٌ أَلِيمٌ I like the word enjoyment they have in this translation. مَتَاءٌ قَلِيلٌ Small benefits is the general translation I would do. وَلَهُمْ عَذَابٌ أَلِيمٌ And for them is a painful punishment. وَعَلَى الَّذِينَ هَادُوا حَرَّمْنَا مَا قَصَصْنَا عَلَيْكَ مِنْ قَبَلٍ And as for the Jewish people, we made some things haram for them that we told you before. That... Uh, you know, uh, the the fact of the uh, of the uh, of the livestock was made uh, haram upon them, and then Yaqub Alayhisalam didn't like certain uh, aspects, so they also took that, and and so those were done to them because out of punishment from Allah Subhanahu wa Taala, as He mentions in the previous surahs, وظلم وما ظلموهم we didn't wrong them, ولكن كانوا أنفسهم يظلمون but they wronged themselves. And this is one of the major points in the Quran. Allah is like, I'm gonna have the day of judgment. I'm not going to wrong you. If anyone does anything wrong, it's going to be you. You've done the wrong to yourself. ثُمَّ إِنَّ رَبَّكَ لِلَّذِينَ عَمِلُوا الصُّوءَ بِجَهَالَةٍ ثُمَّ تُوبُوا مِنْ بَعْدِ ذَلِكَ وَأَصْلَهُ إِنَّ رَبَّكَ مِنْ بَعْدِهَا لَغَفُورٌ رَحِيمٌ Then after that, إِنَّ الَّذِينَ إِنَّ رَبَّكَ Indeed your Rabb for those لِلَّذِينَ عَمَلُوا عَمِلُوا الصُّوءَ Who did evil deeds بِجَهَالَةٍ Because they didn't know Islam. They didn't know. ثُمَّ تَابُوا Then they turn to Allah. مِنْ بَعْدِ ذَلِكْ After that. وَأَسْلَهُ And they make corrections in themselves. A man can be correct, corrected if he has the intention and the will to be corrected. إِنَّ رَبَّكَ مِنْ بَعْدِهَا لَغَفُورٌ رَحِيمٌ Indeed your Rabb, your Master, your Rabb, your Caretaker, after that is غَفُورٌ رَحِيمٌ إِنَّ إِبْرَاهِيمَ كَانَ أُمَّةً قَانِتًا لِلَّهِ حَنِيفًا Indeed Ibrahim alayhi salatu was salam was كان أمة he was a أمة he was an entire أمة he was like a community he was a man of immense stature right he was a leader he is إمام الأنبياء قانتا and he was devout to Allah قانتا لله standing before Allah in complete devotion and complete submission ولم يكن من المشركين and he was not of the people that did shirk with Allah سبحانه وتعالى شاكراً لأنعمي. Now going back to the message of the surah, he was grateful for his favors. So he was grateful. إن شكرتم لأزيد دنكم. If you give thanks, then we give you more. This is the key to success. If you have a, you know, if a Muslim is unthankful and there's a non-Muslim, he's still thankful to Allah. Well, then you know, شاكراً لأنعمي. اجتباه وهداه إلى صراط مستقيم. Allah chose him and guided him to the straight path. وَآتَيْنَهُ فِي الدُّنْيَا حَسَنًا And we gave him good in this world. وَإِنَّهُ فِي الْآخِرَةَ لِمِنَ الصَّالِحِينَ And he's amongst the righteous people in the hereafter. ثُمَّ أَوْهَيْنَا إِلَيْكَ أَنِ اتَّبِعْ مِلَّةَ إِبْرَاهِيمَ حَنِيفًا And then, O Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, we have revealed to you أَنْ اتَّبِعْ مِلَّةَ إِبْرَاهِيمَ حَنِيفًا Follow the Millah, the civilization of Ibrahim. وَمَا كَانَ مِنَ الْمُشْرِكِينَ And he was not of those people that did shirk with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. إِنَّمَا جُعْلِيَ السَّبْتِ عَلَى الَّذِينَ اخْتَلَفُوا فِيهِ And we made the day of Sabbath عَلَى الَّذِينَ اخْتَلَفُوا فِيهِ Regarding the people, or you know, they were differing about the Sabbath, what to do on Sabbath, what not to do on Sabbath, to put the net there or not put the net there. You know, it's kind of like Allah said, don't do any work on Sabbath. We're not really doing any work. We'll just put the nets there and they'll catch the fish because all the fish are there on that day. And then, إِنَّ رَبَّكَ لِيَحْكُمَ بَيْنَهُمْ يَوْمَ الْقِيَامَةِ Allah will judge them on the day of judgment. What was their hearts really? Were their hearts looking for excuses and loopholes? And you know, make Allah happy at the, at the same time we'll make our dunya also? No. Uh, Allah will judge you on the day of judgment. بَيْنَهُمْ يَوْمَ الْقِيَامَةِ فِي مَا كَانُوا فِي يَخْتَلِفُونَ Allah will judge between you on the day of judgment, on the issue of what you used to differ. إِذُوا إِلَى سَبِيد Now, uh, this is... Uh, the because now as the da'wah and the Quran is spreading, so now here are some general rules of the da'wah. Udu ila sabili rabbika bil hikmah. Call to Allah with hikmah. Wal ma'adat al hasana and good, sincere sermons, words of sincerity that will reach the hearts of the people. Wajadil hum milati hasan. Even if you're going to argue with them, argue with them in the best way. Inna rabbika hu a'lamu bi man dalla an sabili. Indeed, your Rabb knows best. Who has left the path, uh, gone to the wrong path from his path, away from his path. And Allah knows best who are guided. And if you were to take, <coughs> to, to strike back at the, uh, at those that oppose you, فَآقِبُوا مِثْلِ مَا أُقِبْتُمْ بِهِ 
then strike back similar to what you were struck back, meaning this specifically in words, not physically. Because in Mecca, the command was, Kufu aydiyakum, take all persecutions. If they kill you, they kill you, you can't do anything. Ta keep your hands tied. Kufu aydiyakum, keep your hands tied. This was the order of the Prophet. But in words, either you can have sabab, or you can return in a better way, or be equal to them. In tone, if you're fighting with your wife also, don't go higher than her in tone. She's fighting with you. At maximum, you can do is keep the same tone. Or, if you want to be nicer, lower your tone. Vice versa. وَإِنْ آقَبْتُمْ فَآقِبُوا مِثْلِ مَا أُوْقِبْتُمْ بِي وَإِنْ سَبَرْتُمْ But if you have sabr, لَهُوَ خَيْرٌ لِلصَّابِرِينَ This is better for the people that have sabr. وَاسْبِرْ وَمَا سَبْرُكَ إِلَّا بِاللَّهِ Sometimes people say something against your religion. It becomes hard to stay your, you know, silent uh, in, in the face of the, 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 the wrong things that they're saying. So say it, but equal to tort back to them or get back to them at the same level they got back they were trying to get back at doing to you have patience O sallallahu alayhi wasallam and your patience is not except for the pleasure of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala except for Allah alayhim don't be sad regarding them and let it not be a distress for you what they are conspiring Allah knows fully well what is happening. Happening in Allah ma'alladina taqaw. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is with the people who have taqwa. Wa hum muhsinoon. Walladhi taqaw walladhi hum muhsinoon. And they are the people who are doing ihsan. They try to do things perfectly and good. So alhamdulillahi bi izzati wa jalali tutimmu salihat. We finish the surah. And we also finish this juz. Alhamdulillah. Make sure to subscribe today and make sure you like and make sure you leave your comments and ideas.